Hey, how's it going? It's Jack Osborne. You are listening to The Diary of a Madman with Dan and Josh. One point we were trying to write songs and and and, and uh, they were going, oh, we got to sound like the Queen record. We got to sound like this one. And I, and I thought to myself, uh, it's kind of weird that the, that we're now being influenced by the bands that we influenced. Don't you think we got a problem? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Dire of the Madman, the ultimate Ozzy Osbourne podcast, where we geek the fuck out about all things Ozzy and all things Ozzy related. I am Josh Crum, and he is Mr. Dan Drago. How's it going, Dan? What is up, Josh? I am still so excited to be back. We were off way too long, guys, and Josh and I couldn't be happier to be back in front of the microphones. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. It ends up Dan was waiting on me to call him, and I was waiting on Dan to call me about a new episode, so yeah. whatever, and then... Luckily, well, crack cocaine fell in our laps, and you know, <clears throat> me, many of our other rock stars, crack cocaine has changed our lives forever. That's right. <laughs> it, it brought <laughs> us back together. No, it's just weird. So, obviously, Josh, being a father, super busy. I'm a dad. I coach. I'm super busy. And I just don't think either of us, you know, we've always said it from the beginning, this has got to be fun, and we're not going to put our lives aside to do it. And I didn't want to yeah. bust his balls. He didn't want to bust my balls, because... We love each other, and we know, hey, well, when it's time to do it, we're going to kick ass yeah. like we always do. So we've been contemplating this episode for quite a while. This has actually been the next episode for like six weeks. <laughs> yeah, easy. I, was, I mean, I, Ryan has had the artwork done, which is fucking killer for uh, two months. Always. Yeah, Thank you, Ryan. Amazing. Always killer artwork. Yeah. He, like – as much as I look forward to putting out the episodes and doing this, I look forward to seeing Ryan's art like equally as much. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Ryan even found the drop for this episode. So you guys, mm -hmm. not the drop, sorry, the intro, which you guys will hear, of course, but we have not put the episode together. But thank you, Ryan, for everything. And it is an awesome cover, man. One of my absolutely. favorites. Absolutely. His No More Tears one was so good. I actually made a canvas out of it and it's hanging in my office at work. Like I fucking love it. I, this is phenomenal. And then he so. also sent us the main cover art, which I have yeah. hanging in my hallway. And, and you have hanging in your right office. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. big part of the show. We love our main man, Ryan. Our main man, sure. the rocker. Yeah, the, the rock rocker. Uh, <laughs> I was getting seasick last week, I think, watching that episode. So. <laughs> yeah, he messaged us the next day. He's like, I rock way too fucking much. I didn't realize that. And we're yeah, like, yeah, we're like, oh, that's all right. We noticed. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so, Dan, we're yeah, just over a week out now from crack cocaine, man. Like. How are you feeling about this amazing track a week later? Good. Uh, exactly the same. Nothing has changed. The bridge has grown on me a little bit more, so that's a positive thing. So awesome. it's still – the song's just gotten better from that perspective. I'm still absolutely in love with the chorus. Great guitar solo by, by Steve Stevens. It's just a great song. Great riffs written by Billy and Steve. And Ozzy sounds awesome. I think the main comment I've heard is Ozzy sounds like it's 2017 to me. Before yeah. the the you know neck issues and everything, and I think you could hear that in the song, but absolutely stellar. I love the reaction it's getting, but it is not uh, you know lessened at all for me. What about you, Josh? Exact same. You know, so many songs. Patient number nine took a minute to grow, right? Yeah. Uh, Under the graveyard certainly took definitely. A At first, I thought, whoa, what is this? Crack cocaine hit like I don't want to change the world would or something like instant like oh fucking classic Aussie right there and. That's great because that's exactly what Billy said they wrote out to do, right? Was like right. the ultimate classic Ozzy song, and they came through in spades. Like it's in, you know, a week and two days now, a week and a day it's been out, and it truly hasn't tarnished any. Like, you know, you get that initial excitement, and sometimes a few days later, you just haven't really revisited or whatever. Like, I still listen to that song on the regular. Like, it's, it's excellent. And like you said, received very well online. Uh, so many people, I've had people in my personal life also, it's like, man, it sounds like it could be on osmosis or no more tears. Yeah. And I'm like, that's a hundred percent what we said also. And I think that's what Billy wanted. Right. So yeah, I mean, kudos to all those guys, you know, and, um, couldn't appreciate more that Mr. Billy Morrison watched our last episode. Dan, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. I mean, you, you know, the comment better than I do, but thank you, Billy, for absolutely reaching out and listening. We're big fans right and, here. Yeah. Perfect. And just really want to say, you know, gods, we're now gods of rock and roll and crack cocaine are some of Ozzy's best songs, I think, over the last decade. 
they're just absolutely no phenomenal. Question. And and I do want to say this is my fault, Billy, before you get to it. I'm the one who heard that you wanted to do a full Ozzy album, and that was on me. And obviously, I heard that incorrectly. What you had said was, I've always wanted to do an album with Billy Morrison on the title. And for some reason, you know, I clicked that yeah. as an Ozzy record. And I, I do apologize about that. But I'm going to follow that up with, you should <laughs> do a full album with Ozzy because you were batting a thousand right now, man. And it, those right. songs are absolutely incredible. So why don't I mean, you get it? Yeah, go ahead, Josh. We all know how we feel about gods. I yeah. mean, like I said, two for two. So Billy enjoyed our episode and he did reach out to us and said, you guys are awesome. Not quite accurate in all places, but awesome nonetheless. Steve and I share guitars in this track, so it's both of us. Steve played the bass. Ozzy's vocal has almost no effects on it. And I have never said I want to write a full Ozzy album. In fact, I said the opposite. But thank you so much for analyzing analyzing this song in such great detail. So one thing about that, I think that Billy might have misunderstood. We knew Billy was on guitar also. I think he thought, yeah. Dan, that we thought he was on bass only, Steve on bass only. Right. And really, we probably could have, and I don't say this to, to kiss ass, we probably could have gave Billy a little more credit on the guitar playing because it was all about Steve. Yeah. And that was probably inaccurate on our part because clearly they wrote this song together and Billy's playing guitar also. And oddly, Steve Stevens on bass. So that yeah. kind of shocked me a little bit. That, right? That's surprising for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think we were also enamored with the guitar solo because the guitar solo is amazing. But yes. definitely, Billy is definitely crunching on those uh, very Zach Wildish riffs yeah. and rhythms. And, you know, we did misunderstand. I had my kids in my ear screaming during the Sirius XM special. And we had just heard it the one time. And he said it prompted him to write a full album and this and that. And that's kind of where we got confused on wanting to write an album. Yeah for himself, not for Ozzy. So yeah, we definitely apologize for that. And as far as the Ozzy's vocal uh, effects, Ryan had only heard the song via a recording from Dan from the premiere because he doesn't have Sirius XM. So it sounded a little more echoey on that. Yeah, a lot of reverb. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, we had even discussed that that night, um, I guess off air, that I think it's just more the recording than anything else. No, came through in spades. Couldn't be more proud of the song, more happy for Billy. Dan, how many views are we at now on YouTube for the music video? For the music video? Mm -hmm. Over for Billy? Over a million, which over is million amazing. Views. In a week. That's amazing for all yeah. I mean, that's amazing for all those guys. Congratulations. It's yeah, huge. Definitely. Huge. Yeah. And we didn't get to discuss the video because when we did our episode, we'd only it heard the track twice. Yeah. The video's fucking awesome. Let's talk about it for a minute, actually. Yeah, I what love your it. Initial thoughts? Yeah, I think it's awesome. I think it's done very well. I can't remember the actor's name who's playing kind of the homeless guy behind him who's dancing and, you know, rocking out with him. I love that part of it. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love Billy and Steve on the rooftop. I think it's my favorite yes. part of the video and how they, they obviously maybe have a drone or something flying in to capture them. And yeah. on one of the tankers, do you, did I you knew catch what you're going to say. Ozzy is written, which is awesome. No, look but, closer. Ozzy Oil. Is Ozzy right. Oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It Good is. call. It yep. is. And of course, that's a throwback to 1986's Ultimate Sin. But I love the video. Ozzy looks awesome. I love how Ozzy brings so much emotion and energy just sitting down, right? I don't think a lot of yeah. people can do that. And the guy's just a professional, man. He's just amazing. Yeah. So one thing I was going to tell you and Ryan, oh, Dan. Paris Jackson was awesome as well. I want to Yes, her and she there. looked great. Yeah, and, she I did mean, look The video great. was shot so well. It was very professional. I yeah. Mean, and, and from what I understand, Billy, like, did the video. So, like, yeah. it's excellent. It, kudos. Talented guy. Better. Um, one thing I wanted to address to you and, and Ryan on, the, on our group chat, and I never actually got around to it. I was busy this weekend with my son playing basketball. But I was listening to the 80 Trunk podcast with Billy Morrison. Oh, I didn't even know that was out. The track. The only thing I wish could have been a little different was he was discussing writing the track, and I was praying he would mention Aiden that Ozzy wrote the lyrics, and he didn't. Oh. He just said, Steve and I wanted to write the ultimate Ozzy song. Ozzy heard it. He loved it, and it went from there, and it was kind of like, ah, oh, he never got to actually say that. But they were talking about the track, and Eddie Trunk also said it had like a 90s vibe, and he dug it and this and that. And they started talking about the music video and what – what Billy said, Billy, if you if you see this episode, thank you for saying this. And I admit it from the bottom of my heart. He said, my, he said, Eddie said, Ozzy looked great in the video. And Billy said, well, he's my mate and I love him. And all I see anymore online is how frail he looks and how bad he looks. He said, I wanted to make sure Ozzy looked like the king he is in that video. And I got chilled, but I was like, that was the greatest thing to hear him say it that way. 
he said because he is and i wanted to make sure people saw how that he's not as frail as he looks and he's doing better than people think and i wanted to make sure he looked like a king uh that's and, such a and he was like you did it because he looks great and i was like that was awesome and hearing that and like i said billy if you're watching this man thank you from both of us that was yeah, for sure amazing yeah because we and agree is a king the king of rock and roll i mean we know that's elvis man. but ozzy is definitely the godfather of metal and that'll 100%. never be taken away from him and thank you yes. billy for that and thank you for just writing some great songs with ozzy you are really understanding what makes him tick because gods has got that beatles vibe with the piano which i'm in mm -hmm. love with and this sounds like classic era Ozzy with Zach Wild, Osmosis, No More Tears era. I mean, yeah. just absolutely perfect. And Ozzy's yeah. melodies are just so good. That chorus, has it grown on you at all? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All I right, still that's what I was hoping still... for. Yeah. Get the fuck and out of here. Look, now it's time. Mr. Armageddon. You know how we are, man. We get it. Okay, great. Let's move yeah. on to the next one. Mr. Armageddon. Let's go ahead and throw that on as a bonus track or something. What the yeah, I wish Billy would have mentioned Mr. Armageddon. Even what style of song it is. Billy, if you're listening, just give us a little nugget of what style the song mr armageddon is because to me it sounds so like epic bit. man epic. absolutely yeah absolutely. for sure so the other news we want to bring up this week before we get into our topic and we are loving the topic this week and if you look behind me there's a little sneak peek of what it is but ozzy has dropped to fourth place in the rock and roll hall of fame ballot you know i i know some people think it's conspiracy i do not i mean obviously i just think you know, the Aussie fans voted fast and furious early and have just really leveled off. I know I have personally, I got to get back on voting, but I think also people start to realize the vote doesn't mean anything, which I think could turn right. some people off and plus take nothing away from foreigner and Dave Matthews and uh, Peter Frampton who they, you know, they got great fan bases and they're probably doing a really good job of getting in front of them. I know Dave yeah. Matthews has done it. Dave Matthews has won the fan vote before and didn't get in. So this is nothing new. So what do you think, Josh? Ozzy's now in fourth place. It's frustrating for me. Um, when I, and I think what's happened with the Ozzy fans is I think when Dave Matthews passed him up, and let's be clear, he's like 40,000 votes or something over him right now. It's something stupid. I think a lot of Ozzy fans went, eh, okay, well, fuck it. He ain't going to win and have quit voting for that reason. Yeah. I think that's kind of what happened there. So now it's gotten where foreigners passed and, but ultimately it, it doesn't mean anything. I wanted it for Ozzy because I knew it was something he'd be proud of to win that fan vote. Uh, but ultimately, it, it doesn't matter. I, I still think he gets in. I hope Frampton gets in. I hope Foreigner gets in. Dave Matthews, man, I couldn't really care less. I, I do love Foreigner a lot, so I'm, I'm a no. big fan of those guys. But For me, it's about yeah. if it's not Ozzy, I'd like to see Oasis get in personally. Yeah, I, mean, I, I do Oasis like Oasis. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, But, you know, it's a little frustrating, but it just is what it is. We'll wait till April comes and, and, and see what happens with the real voters. Well, Ozzy did say this week he does not think he's going to get in. I don't know if you saw that article, but uh, he being has humble. some doubts. Yeah, yeah, he is being humble, but that, I feel the same way. I am 40, 60, 40% 40 yeah. he gets in, 60% he doesn't. I just, you know, I, I think it's one of those things where we nominated him, you know, but yeah. he's not going to get in. Could be, could be. One more thing before we get into the new topic for this new episode. Uh, Dan, you want to discuss real quick the new Judas Priest record. It's yeah, been out absolutely. for a minute now. Yeah, sorry we yeah. haven't got to talk about it yet. Yeah, we've been all jizzing over it for the past month. Let's go ahead and just, uh, discuss it for a second. What's your uh, initial thoughts? Yeah, the new Judas Priest record, Invincible Shield, is absolutely mind-blowing. On par, if not even better than Firepower. It is absolutely a crushing record. And I think everybody who is listening to this agrees that Richie Faulkner is the savior of metal, the best guitar player on the scene right now. And God, I wish Richie Faulkner was a guitar player for Ozzy and <laughs> would write a record with Ozzy because <laughs> that would be the greatest record in years. And no offense to anything Ozzy's done recently or what Priest has done, but you know, Richie is kind of the second coming of Randy. And I know people might get mad at me saying that, but He's very, very similar to what Randy is. And I, I think he's a huge him. fan. Yeah, he is a huge fan. He, he, he dresses like him and stuff. He, he yeah. looks like Randy on stage. He's a clone, no question. Yeah. But the guy's a god, and he has injected so much life into Judas Priest. And I just got to say, Panic Attack through probably Trail by Fire is just incredible. You have songs like Gates of Hell, Devil in Disguise, The Serpent uh, and the King, all great, great songs. I mean, of course, Panic Attack. The thing just never lets up. Mm -hmm. You know, towards the end, I think The Lodger is a pretty cool track written by Bob Halligan. Cool Bob Halligan Jr., who also wrote Some Heads Are Gonna Roll. He also wrote it, uh, what is it, Twist, I think, off of uh, Halford's first record. 
So really cool to have him back. Uh, he also wrote Take These Chains, which is also one of my all-time favorite Priest songs, which is not a popular opinion. Sorry, George, yeah. but I absolutely <laughs> love Take These Chains. But what a great record. Rob it sounds is. incredible. Hats off to Andy Sneap. His guitar tones are always great. What a great production. I just think the band sounds on fire. What do you think, man? Ian Hill also. We've got to get oh, credit. Yeah. Like, Scott we, Travis. We, we talked about him. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, I love it, man. There's so much old school priest in there. Just like you said about um, Richie Faulkner, just the energy. The Serpent and the King is the one I just can't get over, man. I'm like, that's so fucking good. Like, that is so – if you're a priest fan, that's so good. But I truly – there's not any – throwaway tracks no at all and that includes the three bonus tracks like the the target you know streaming bonus tracks i think those are amazing also so yeah it's hats off to those guys happy for them you know thank you for bringing us some great music and yeah just let's keep keep it going man because they got it rock and rolling for sure i think uh you know glenn tipton's on four tracks so he yeah. is on the record there's a presence there uh you know and he had a tape like tony does stuff. that they got to pick shit out of which is really yeah. cool and fight of your life is incredible I'm, you know, even though it's relegated to a bonus track, God, that has such a 1970s stained class feel. I love that yeah. song. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Hats off. Absolutely. Well, that said, Dan, are you ready to move on to today's topic? I am. I've been wanting to do this topic, and I know you have too, but a long time. We figured it was time to really do another deep dive, and this is the choice for sure. And it's coincidentally all I've been listening to even before we decided it. So, Josh, yeah. why don't you go ahead and spill it? So today we are discussing a deep dive of Never Say Die, exclamation mark. Never say die. die. <laughs> the greatest. Because, you know, we are the guys who get into the high weeds, right? We're the ones, we don't want to discuss Paranoid. We want to discuss the albums that are less discussed. That's why we opened up the show with Osmosis. Never Say Die. You know, it's it's a tr an, an album that clearly is, you know. Di divisive. Di di yeah, absolutely. And, you know. Everyone doesn't love it. Some people love it more than others, but that's what we're going to break down. And I know we love it, of course, or we wouldn't be doing this episode. But now I look forward to talking about it and, and getting listener feedback on how they feel about this one, because we all know how you feel about Paranoid and Master of Reality. How do you feel about Never Say Die? Yeah, I, I'm very curious to see what people are going to say about this record, because like we had said, it is very divisive. But there is a sect of fans that absolutely love this record. And I think there's a lot of people that have just never given it a shot because – they people know oh it's their worst record and what the mood was like in the band and we'll get into all of that but i don't think people really give this album a fair shake because if they did it would be they'd be singing a different story because this record in my honest opinion is absolutely amazing especially side one side one of never say die is one of the best sides in black sabbath history honestly Agreed. and you know how like if you're new to metal and it's like, and we may not like some of these bands either, but it's like, it's cool to hate Five Finger Death Punch or it's cool to hate Nickelback. Right. I think if you really don't know Sabbath, you automatically write off Technical Ecstasy and never say die because you're supposed to. Yeah, you know exactly. You what I'm saying? And That's exactly like right. really listen. It was so funny. I got to tell a quick story. Uh, one of my last gigs I've played, it's been about a year ago. We've not played a whole lot this year. And this kid was wearing a Black Sabbath shirt when I was at the merch table and he was buying a shirt. And I said, oh, Black Sabbath. I said, what's your favorite song? And he goes, oh, you wouldn't know it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you know who you're talking to? <laughs> I'm like, try me. He's like, it's a song called Air Dance. And I was like, oh, it's on Never Say Die. And he's like, oh, cool. Like, like apparently no one knows this track, you know. Right. But kudos well, to the kid. A lot of people though. might it, not it know it. Yeah. yeah sure. it, it, it was a cool pick, though, for real. But yeah, I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. So yeah, there's some good stuff on there that I think a lot of people, it's just, it's different. And we'll get into that. So before we get into details, I'm going to tell a quick story. So as I've said on the show, I've gotten into Ozzy in 1982, late 82, right when Diary of a Madman came out. And my first album that I bought, because my brother owned Blizzard and Diary at the time, so the first album I bought with my own money was actually Never Say Die. Because in my brain, I was thinking, well, it's the newest Ozzy era album. It was the, you know, the last album he did with the band. So instead of going Mob Rules and Heaven and Hell, of course, which a lot of people my day, age did, because that was what was going on at the time. I was such an Ozzy fan, even at that young age. My thought process was, I'm going to get the newest Black Sabbath Ozzy released album. So I bought Never Say Die. And maybe that's why it has a special place in my heart. But I, was, I loved it since day one, man, day one. That's awesome. 
That's yeah. awesome. Truly, it didn't have to grow on me either. I, I no. remember it, it wasn't the first one I bought, but it was one of the first ones, and I've always enjoyed the album. So, yeah, I I have one small gripe about it, and we'll get to it here in a sec. But I don't know what the critique is. I know the band hates it, and I understand that because your favorite records and your least like records are really what's going on within the band at the time. And if you enjoyed making them, and Josh and I have been there on many accounts where. I have not liked a record, but somebody's told me, oh, my, that's my favorite record you've done. But ultimately, maybe the band wasn't getting along and yeah. it was kind of tough to make. We just drug out. I had one that, yeah, yeah and we're not a big band. Yeah, neither <laughs> and I had an album that took almost three years. It was just yeah. stupid. It and was by, just the time it was, I, by the time it was finished, I'm like, just fucking put it out. I don't yeah. even care about the new mixes or like this. It's, and of course, the finished product, Dan, was what? what it was two years ago. Yeah, of course. The, you know what yeah. I mean? So yeah, but it, it can frustrate you and definitely views, especially for Ozzy. We've discussed this a lot on the show. He recalls the recording process more than the product. 100%. 100%. Absolutely. So let's talk about it. Black Sabbath's Never Say Die was released September 29th, 1978. So, you know, kind of a little bit, I was going to say mid-year, but, you know, it has a lot of controversy. Here's the key here. It was also produced by Black Sabbath. And I think that hinders the record quite a bit. And that's something else I'll get into. Um, it was released on Warner Brothers in the States, Vertigo in the UK. You know, actually the album did better than people realize in the UK. It hit 66 on the charts in, I'm sorry, 69 in the charts in America. But in the UK, it actually hit 12, 12. which yeah. was not bad. And I know everybody's saying, oh, when Dio came in, it gave him a shot in the arm. But it, it performed better than Technical Ecstasy. Technical Ecstasy was 13 in the UK, where Never Say Die actually improved upon that. It was almost a top 10 record. Never Say Die was a was a top 40 single, and so was A Hard Road was a top 40 single. So they actually had a lot of success in the UK, which is surprising because punk was rampant at that time. Maybe almost actually towards the de- dying days of punk in the UK. And I think it was starting to get bigger in America. And I think maybe that's what, you know, because America was a little behind the UK when it came to the punk movement. But what do you think? Why do you think it was more popular in the UK and kind of fell on its ass a little bit in the in the States? You know, I think at that time, too, coming into that, I think the UK didn't like behavior and music quite as much as the States did. So I think maybe, you know, the fact that Technical Ecstasy and Never Say Die are a little bit more hard rock instead of metal. Maybe that suited the the British crowd a little bit better than than the hard rock stuff actually did, or the metal stuff. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, it it did well. And you know, typically, album, you know, back then, especially for the younger listeners, you would kind of, you wouldn't now you peak your first week, then you just go down. Yeah. And back then, you would kind of grow yep. typically. So it, it's all based on on strength of singles and stuff like that. So clearly, never say die. The song uh, had an impact in 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 Britain. And they performed on Top, top of the Pops, you yeah. know, which we've all seen that great video with Ozzy miming. Um, but yeah, I think Never Say Die is a super strong sing- single. Yeah. And they just didn't, they didn't really build upon that in the States for some reason. And I'm not quite sure. So let's talk a little bit, Josh, how we get here. Okay. Technical Absolutely. Ecstasy is released. Uh, the band is having some infighting. One of the key things that I want to talk about real quick, how we get here is, On Technical Ecstasy, the band decides to get a little bit more mainstream and tunes back from C sharp back to E. So people who are guitar players or not guitar players, the first two Black Sabbath records, Black Sabbath and Paranoid, are tuned to E standard. That's standard tuning. And then come on Master Reality, they're tuned down to C sharp, which is a whole step and a half low to help Tony's fingers. But for some reason on Technical Ecstasy, they tune back up to E. So real quick, my point on this is when Ozzy's writing melodies for Sabotage and Sabbath Bloody Sabbath and Volume 4, where these songs are super low and heavy, you can sing a higher vocal line because you're starting from a lower point. So it gives you an easier place to hit a a higher note. But if you're starting at E, you're capped a little bit because you're starting from, or you're already starting from a higher pitch, if that makes sense. So I think one of the keys here, especially on technical ecstasy, and I hear it a little bit on Never Say Die as well, no one worked with Ozzy like Randy did a couple of years later to help him realize, hey, dude, we're now back up to E. They probably didn't even tell him. They're just like, here's your next riff. You don't have to go as high. Because in my honest opinion, if obvious, Ozzy sang Technical XC and Never Say Die like he did the first two records, I think they would have been more powerful and more popular. 
What do you think, yeah. Josh? Yeah, I agree totally. And <clears throat> for those that maybe don't understand the lingo we're using, when Dan says tune down to C sharp, if you'll notice how like in a lot of ways, Master of Reality is the first doomy metal sound. And that's why for sure. it's, it's, yeah. it's that tune down sound. That's what that does. Uh, and you can hear it even on the live show, they would tune up. If you watch the Never Say Die Live DVD that's out there now when they're doing Symphony Universe, and I was there, he's yeah. gritting. Everything he's got to, to belt that out. And I think it had a lot to do with blowing his voice out uh, long term, also uh, touring did. on those songs and having to sing them up high like that. But yeah, uh, you know, I'm like you. I kind of, you know, if he had sang those in a more, in a lower register, it probably would have helped a little bit because it, and obviously songs you can really can't replicate live either sometimes. So it's, oh, Geezer said that. In his book. Right. Geezer says that. Sorry to interrupt you. Say that again. No, I'm sorry. No. Okay. So Geezer says that in his book, which annoys the shit out of me because he says, well, then Ozzy sang the melodies too high and we couldn't replicate a lot of them live. And I'm like, well, Jesus, was anybody working with the guy to say, hey, Oz, we're starting, we're back up to E. We got to maybe have to go back to that original sound and those yeah. original, you know, vocal uh, melodies that you were doing back and in the day. Any band will set the key to what suits the, the singer i mean it's just a, a reality if your singer struggle you tune down or whatever i mean you know you got you got to serve them right so and ozzy's capable of singing an e as we are you know singing with guitars tuned to e or e flat because that's what he does in a solo for the all the early solo stuff it's either e or e flat and that's when in my opinion and i think your opinion ozzy sounds the best why is that because randy took the time to teach him what to do and by the time randy was gone unfortunately when Jake came in, Ozzy had learned it, so he knew what to do going forward instead of having to sing those crazy high notes that he did in those mid-Sabbath years. Absolutely. So, um, go ahead. Go ahead. Now you go ahead. So I, I was going to read a little something. If I read it in a second, I'll save you. You guys can wonder. What's all right, perfect. Be. So technical ecstasy comes out. They do the tour, and then they take a little bit of a break. And during that break, Ozzy's father passes away. Jack Osborne. He was close to the whole band. We all know the story. He made them the iron crosses that they wear. And this fucked up Ozzy pretty good mentally as it would yeah. most people, right? Yeah. So you want to touch on that at all? Now, with this, you know, like you said, it fucked him up. Ozzy always felt a guilt that he didn't take better care of his parents, I think. Yeah. He's mentioned that before. You know, he had made this money. They had lost a lot of money. He lost but he never really took care of his parents the way he wished he would have. And, and his dad was close to the band. His dad got him his first PA. That's what got him the gig with Black Sabbath. And they were broke and as a joke. Yeah, and he knows yeah. they really didn't have the money for it. Right. Know? So I, he he was definitely close with his dad, and and it hit him hard. And I think he hit all the guys hard. He did hard enough that Geezer felt the need to rewrite, you know, Junior's eyes a little bit for for Jack, and that's amazing. We'll get into that later for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. So Ozzy's grieving. He's fucked up. He's pissed off that uh, Patrick Meehan stole all the money from the band. All the guys are. He's in a bad place mentally, and he needs a break. So what do the guys do on his break? You know, he quits. Whatever. They bring in Dave Walker, uh, who they knew from Birmingham, from a band called the Red Caps. He was playing with them back in Birmingham, but he went on to get some fame in Savoy Brown and Fleetwood Mac. And then yeah. they wrote three, about three songs, I think, with Dave Walker. Not, not a ton. You know, I thought it was a full record, but after doing all my research this week, I think they had about three songs done with Dave Walker. Yeah, yeah. And also in that same period, they had fired Geezer. Right. And he and had caught him back. So Geezer right. was out of the band for like two weeks and Geezer was kind of disenchanted with it anyway. And uh, then all of a sudden they just constantly rehearsal start tomorrow. And he's just like, what the fuck? You know, I'm back. Comes back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so there's a lot of dysfunction going on and, and the, the wheels are definitely falling off. Correct. So Tony winds up booking a studio in Toronto called Sound Interchange. The Rolling Stones did a live record there. Tony talks about how it helped them a lot with taxes and they were struggling financially. They were broke. They couldn't cancel the, the, the booking because they couldn't afford it. They had, yeah. once they booked it, they had to stay there. So three days before they go to Toronto to record, Ozzy decides to come back. I mean, uh, imagine that dude. It's pretty crazy. That it's unreal. It's yeah, unreal. unreal. You know? So yeah. in my brain, I think Ozzy knew he was going to come back just like geezer did. And they talk about, they didn't know, you know, they didn't know what else to do with their lives if it wasn't for Black Sabbath. Right. The only person that would have no problem with three days is Zach Wilde. Like, Zach could do you two fucking records in three days. Yeah, that is very on. true. A hundred percent. It would be like, no problem. Like, three days. You kidding? Shit. That's nothing. But so, no, it's, it's definitely yeah. an interesting time, man. And and like you said, it's all under the gun, right? They're, they're, the wheels are already falling off. And now, you on top of it, you have a time restraint. Right. Record labels down their throat asking for the product. 
They don't have any material because Ozzy refuses to sing any of the Dave Walker material, which yeah. I don't blame him, but I'm, I'm going to just stay on this part a little bit because we'll talk about his version of Junior's Eyes when we get to Junior's Eyes. But to all of the naysayers out there that doesn't think Ozzy writes anything, and we know who we're talking about, is if the guy was not that passionate about it and didn't give a shit, why would he refuse to sing somebody else's melodies? Honestly. That's an excellent point, man. Right? I mean, why yeah. wouldn't he just say, hey, the songs are done, let's if, go do it. I don't do anything. If Bill's melody and he didn't give a shit, then what's the difference? Right, you know? exactly. Yeah. But obviously he cares and he wanted his input and his contribution to the song. So again, another very valid point that Ozzy did the melodies. And I, one of the things Ozzy has talked about writing this record is they had a way to write it. And I was reading a, a interview from him uh, during the Never Say Die, uh, probably during actually, I'm sorry, Blizzard of Oz era, where, you know, they, they had that uh, Tony brought the riff in or Geezer sometimes. And then Ozzy did the melody, then Geezer did the lyrics. And that, that was their formula. And they were getting away from that on Black, on Never Say Die, and it pissed the fuck out of Ozzy off. Yeah. It there was also a sense, even though they got away from that, there was a sense of they were just waiting on Tony to do it all also, as oh, far for as the, sure. the early writing goes. And I think Tony had a lot of pressure from that. He's mentioned in his book, I can't remember if it was the never said that he's definitely mentioned writer's block from time to time in his book and struggling with he that. Any, block there, anybody sure. does. I mean, it, it happens. Uh and I think they were just all laid back waiting on Tony. And can I read this section from Geezer Butler's book real quick? Yeah, let's do I thought it. was interesting. <clears throat> hey guys, Josh can read. Did you know that? Hey. Can't promise I won't stutter a lot. Everything about making this album was like pulling teeth, which is why it's so much of it brings back bad vibes when I hear it. Again, going back to the process, ruining it for, for the Everybody. artist, right? Yeah. There are some good tracks on it, particularly Junior's Eyes and Johnny Blade, which are about which is about Bill's brother. It was also in, uh, the intro of the. <laughs> who Josh was also into the flick knives <laughs> whatever maybe i can't read but we had lost direction and served up a disjointed jumble of hard rock to soft rock with no metal to be seen and because we hadn't used it a proper producer the sound was peculiar uh, with far too many overdubs even the title of the album turned out to be ridiculous never say die made it sound like we'd come roaring back from somewhere we'd never been to we'd actually lost our legs so you definitely i think that paragraph just sums up where the band was in so many ways you know pulling teeth you know they're, they're not enjoying this process it doesn't mean the songs aren't good two but... things on that well first of all if you have not picked up geezer's book it is absolutely incredible it's called into the void and it is definitely an amazing read i read it a couple of months ago hats off to geezer Definitely uh, pick it up. It's an incredible read from his whole life story. It's awesome. Geezer's just one of those intelligent blokes that, I mean, he's a great storyteller. It's awesome. So the one person that was trying was Bill. And we're going to get into this as, this as the show goes on, but Bill was trying his best to keep the band together. What a lot of people don't realize is Bill came up with, but Bill and Ozzy came up with the Never Say Die. They were fucking around trying to think up of ideas and Ozzy was saying die. And, you know, Bill was like, never. And they just kind of came across Never Say Die. And Bill thought, oh, my God, this is perfect. We're on our last legs. Let's try to, you know, but Tony and Geezer didn't like it because they knew it was a false equivalency of really what was going on. So they, but they went with it because Ozzy and Bill really liked the title. So Bill was trying. And there's going to be a couple of things when we talk about the songs that Bill did to try to keep this band whole and together. And hats off to Bill because he did not want to see it fall apart. And obviously, you know, once Ozzy leaves after this and Bill does Heaven and Hell and can't do it without Ozzy, I mean, I think Bill would have been like that with all four of them. He yeah. just felt like Black Sabbath was the original four. And, you know, the track, the title Never Say Die, for me personally, I always took it the opposite of what Geezer said in the book. I took it as, yeah, the wheels are falling off, but we're, we're never – we're going to keep moving forward as best we can. And even on the live at London DVD – uh, I hope we're here for another 10 years yeah. and another 10 years. Like they knew it was getting hard, it but was. it's like, they all were trying. It's like a married couple that's going to counseling or something. You know what I mean? Like never said I were trying, but clearly the wheels did fall off. But okay. yeah, Geezer actually, there's <laughs> another interview where Geezer talks about when Ozzy would say that on stage, he'd roll his eyes. Cause he knew, he knew it was over. It was happening. Just, yeah, it was happening. 
and yeah. Ozzy knew it too. I think you know. Yeah, they all. That's why I would say it. You know, for sure. Was, yeah. yeah. Well, Tony and Ozzy actually had the biggest uh, issues going right now. They couldn't communicate. Like they were not even talking. So how can you? You've been in a band. I know I have. Where you're not talking to a member, and it is miserable. Well, I mean, let's just be honest. We love Tony Iommi. I mean, God damn, we love Tony Iommi. Love but he has Ozzy on stage fucking right so far that he's barely on the fucking stage. I mean, yeah. of course there's issue there. It's ridiculous. And it, to this day, that irks me when I watch that video. It's the one thing I hate. I'm like, this is so ridiculous. But still yet, during the song, they were said, Ozzy's up there jamming with him. And it's my favorite part of the whole video. Like he's, By far. And, and, yeah, you know Tony's just being Tony rocking, you know, and Ozzy's clapping his hands and stomping his feet, and I just love that part. But. That's what makes Ozzy Ozzy. If you've never yeah. seen that video, watch the live version. Never say die after the song's over. They do that. I call it a boogie riff. It's the mm -hmm. classic boogie riff. Awesome. And Ozzy, it gives me chills, chill yeah. bumps, as Josh would it's, say. It's chilly willies, chill <laughs> bumps. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Yeah. So, so what they have to do, they don't have any material. So I did read, by the way, this is new to me. This is a new little nugget. They had started Junior's Eyes before Ozzy had left the band. So I believe that's why he sang on it, because they had started that song back in 1977. So okay. when Ozzy left, they brought they took away his melodies and just let Dave Walker uh, sing on it. No thing. Yeah. So that song was started. But other than that, they really didn't have any material. Um, what they did is they rented a cinema, a movie theater, because that was the only place to rehearse. And they, I've read, literally, I've read so many articles this week, but one said eight o'clock, one said nine o'clock, and one said 10 o'clock that they'd show up. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously they showed up in the morning. They got to rehearse for about four hours, wrote the songs in the day, and then had to go to the studio that night to record. And record. And it was freezing in there apparently, right? Because it was sub-zero the temperatures in, in Toronto. And no that heat. theater had like no heat. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they were freezing to death writing them. Yeah. So yeah, it's, go do what you got to do. And like Dan said, Tony's trying to save money to go to Toronto, which makes total sense also. And, you know, you got to do what you have to do. But that would have been an interesting process to be videoed for a documentary, wouldn't it? It is, for sure. And one of the things, too, and uh, this was in Tony's book and a couple of different articles I read, too, where the first thing Tony did when he got to the studio was tore up the carpet and pulled out all the, dra all the drapes because they could not get a good sound. And that is going to be my biggest gripe on the record. I think the sound of the record... Yeah. Except for the drums. For some reason, I love the sound of the drums on it, but everything else sounds cold and clinical. And I am not a big fan of the sound of the record. Not the songs, just the overall sound of it. What do you think? I agree totally. I think most listeners will agree with you totally. Uh, Tony was right. You know, yeah. it, it, the studio did not have a good sound. And, and even with him ripping up the carpet and pissing everyone off and having to pay right. to get it repaired, yeah, yeah, it yeah. didn't really, maybe it helped, but it still didn't do the trick. Right? It did not do the trick. <laughs> and at and all. that definitely is part of the issue with that album for sure. Yeah, for sure. So just imagine being one of the biggest bands in the world, know your backs against the wall because punk is in, S Sex Pistols are killing it in the UK, and you have to write your record at a cinema in the morning. <laughs> And go record it. Josh is dropping shit. And go record it that night in the studio. And Tony has said his biggest issue is, is they would write stuff and then listen to it and then let it sink in and make changes to it. There it is. Awesome. Yeah. Um, this rose so, is right here beside of me. So I was like, oh, it's right there, actually. There it yeah. is. Look at that. Um, so, again, that that's a tall task for anybody. Let's be perfectly for sure. honest. Yeah, for sure. And not to mention fatigue. I mean, the studio will wear you down when you're exhausting. in it. And to be doing that in the morning. And Tony's producing, too. We producing. know it's Tony producing. It says Black Sabbath, but we all know Tony produced the record. And before we move on to the tracks, I want to say one more thing. Like, the title, Never Say Die, whatever. You can like it, you can not. We all can agree that cover fucking rules. It is amazing. Done by Hypnosis. It rules. It's the Love greatest it. album cover, for sure. It's up it, there rules so obviously i was going to bring that up too so great let's talk about that Sorry. josh so it was done by hypnosis who also did the technical ecstasy cover which is the worst fucking cover it does not rule <laughs> <laughs> terrible so it is the worst the record label wanted them to use the cover that rainbow used for difficult to cure which is the doctors yeah. with the mask holding the gloves and thank god can you imagine if that was the cover yeah, i just think the album would it wouldn't work Nowhere near as iconic. And I love the shirts. Like to this day, they, well, 
Tom McLeafatus' drum kit on the final on the on the 13 tour had the uh, you know the mask the uh, what am I trying to say the f- gas mask the gas mask yeah I mean <laughs> all that the pilot the fighter pilot is what I was trying yeah. to say this it's so fucking I'm glad the band does at least see the value in the album cover because it definitely fucking rolls so I was reading a, a little thing on the hypnosis and they actually created the gas mask themselves it's not a traditional gas mask. They want, shockingly enough, they wanted a combination of fighter pilot and S and M. And I don't get the S and M part at all, but that's what they were kind of going for. But you know, one of the things well, that, nobody talks about. That's what he does also, though, with like technical ways to see, right? Yeah, that's right. Supposed to be like S and M and stuff. That, they're so, fucking. Yeah, the robots supposed are supposed to be like a robot fucking a uh, robot. another robot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. And then and then it just moves on like most yeah. men do. Like, yeah. <laughs> I love it, but. You know, the weird thing is, is, you know, no one talks about the ghosts and the clouds very often. And it's pretty cool. You know, you got to look for them. See, here he goes. Uh, but there's a lot of images in the clouds that a lot of people don't talk about. But it's kind of cool. That's kind of like the camel back in the day, the, the cigarette camel, right? You could look in the camel on the cigarette pack and you'd see like Jimi Hendrix was in it and all yeah, kinds yeah. of shit. Did you know that? Yep. Yeah. But yeah, there's, oh, that's there's cool, yeah. yeah, you could what, see little. What am I supposed to be stuff. seeing in here, Dan? I don't, I've never done this. Wow, see, this Josh is, is even learning something. So yeah. if you look in the clouds, it's like the spirits of past fighter pilots. Oh, yeah, you can see like right here, like buckles and shit. And yeah, things. it's really, really oh. cool. See that? Interesting. We easier to see on the vinyl, obviously, which I have that over there also. But Yeah, and I don't want to get up and grab the vinyl since I yeah. have it on display behind me. But yeah, yeah. guys, if you have your co- copy, look for it. It's really, really cool. There's There's stuff on both sides. On the back, too, there's stuff on the clouds. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, yeah absolutely. They knocked it out of the park. It's, it, you know, outside of maybe the first album cover, you know, this is, this is it. Yeah. And everybody knows Henry is the Black Sabbath guy, but I think I can make an argument that the fighter pilots have become more iconic and more popular. By I far. agree. Yes. I've never thought about it before, but I agree 100%. Like if I'm getting a tattoo, I'm getting those dudes before Fuck I'm getting yeah. Henry. Henry. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, Geezer drew Henry. I did not know that. It's hmm, pretty interesting. I didn't know that either. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right, so Josh, why don't you go through the track list real quick, and then we'll start talking song by song. All right, so yeah, the track listing opens up with, I believe it would be Never Say Die, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. I think Brain that's Buster it. on that one. And then we go into Johnny Blade, Junior's Eyes, A Hard Road, Shockwave, Air Dance, Over to You, Breakout, and Swing in the Chain. So we got nine tracks on this one, all written by Black Sabbath, Iommi, Butler, Ward, and of course... Mr. Man. Osborne. So, yeah, Dan, you want to start yeah. us off first with Never Said Die and give us your initial thoughts on that one? Yeah, of course. And real quick, the personnel is what, what Josh just said. And then we had guest appearances by Ms. one the, the one and only Don Airy, who plays keyboards all over this record. And John Elstar plays harmonica on Swing in the Chain. And we'll get to that when we get to that song. Yeah. 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 So, all right. So the album starts with a bang to me. I think Never Say Die is the unsung hero in the Black Sabbath catalog. It is kind of got a punk vibe. It is super aggressive. It's got a very, very basic riff, but I think it's driving. Bill's drums are so incredible in there. And of course, I think it's Ozzy's melody on this song in particular that really drive the song home. It is infectious. Love it. I just think the guitar is great. One of the things I love about this song and a lot of people, it took me years to finally hear this, to be perfectly honest. But when he starts singing Painting Silver Linings, Tony changes up his riff and he plays a little bit of a boogie riff behind it instead of the the classic, you yes. know, uh, riff that's been going on. The song's been covered by Megadeth, been covered by Overkill. It is a classic. I think this is loved. It was done on Ozzy's Speak of the Devil um, album and in a, in a, an amazing version of it, to be perfectly honest. And I think this is the song, in my opinion, that should have been played on the reunion. No songs off this record were played on the whole reunion, the 20 years they were together. That pisses me off and breaks my heart a little bit. But this is the song. It is a classic Black Sabbath song in the vein of Paranoid. And I think they purposely wrote a single to try to emulate the punk scene that was going on at the time. What else is there to say? Dan's the man. He just nailed it. I mean, 100%. I love that you mentioned Tony's rhythm behind the last verse. Yeah. Uh, the, the Panic Silver Lining. Dun, dun, dun. And that's kind of like the jam we mentioned earlier on the Live in London DVD. That's kind of what he's playing there in that group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That part, just, just instrumental. And then Ozzy's just jamming to it. But again, like you said, it's got a punk vibe, radio-friendly vibe, definitely written to be a single vibe. 
but it all works. The lyrics are great. It's fun. It, I think, and like you said, had they played this one live going forward, it would be regarded right there with all the others. No question about it. But like even the opening line, people going nowhere, taken for a ride. Like th- that's so memorable. How many songs open up with a line as memorable as Never Say Die? Like you can hear this song twice and you remember that for the rest of your life. You know. Oh my God. The lyrics are incredible. Hats off to They are. Them. And the melody, again, always with Ozzy, the melodies are so good. The lyrics are great, you know. It's just a fun song. Tony's solo is saved for the very end of the track, and Tony is shredding. Yeah, I think Tony you know, is amazing on this record. Yes, didn't overplay at all. Like you, the solo's legit, probably twenty seconds or it's something, so but it's good. fucking burning Ripping. and it's perfect. Yes, great. So I do want to go single. over the lyrics like we normally do, if that's okay. Because yeah. the one complaint I have on this song is Ozzy can sometimes be indecipherable. Because I, I already disagreed with what you said. I say painting silver linings. You say panic silver linings. Panic. Yeah. Nah, it's painting. And uh, the 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 online lyrics are kind of shit. Most of them on a lot of these songs. Like, they are. It, yeah. So Ozzy isn't as crystal clear as he normally is. Because I normally don't think Ozzy is very hard to understand. But there are moments on this record, especially this song, where he is. And I think we're going to end this show going, I don't really know what, what he says here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... I want to go through lyrics more than the meaning, more to say, hey, what what is Ozzy saying here? Because, you know, the lyrics didn't come with this record, and they came with the Black Sabbath box set that came out, uh, that CD box set. But even then, some of those lyrics are wrong. I, yeah. They did a terrible job of, of proofing those. It happens all the time. So if that's okay, uh, can, I, can I go through yeah, them Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. All right, perfect. Go. So we got, I got right here. people going nowhere, taken for a ride. Looking for the answers that they know inside. One of the great, like you said, maybe the greatest opening lyric in, in Black Sabbath history. Searching for a reason, looking for a rhyme, Snow White's mirror said, partners in crime. So it used to say no one is innocent. It also has said Snow White's parasite, but I believe it's Snow White's mirror said, partners in crime. Because you're. I've always been a no one's innocent. It's definitely have- not always been no one's innocent yeah yeah i can't help it that's i, so I still it, hear it away in my head yeah but it's definitely snow white's mirror said it could be snow white's parasite because ozzy is definitely you know i listen to all three versions today trying to nail down this song particularly but at the end of the day snow white's mirror said partners in crime by far makes the most sense because you know snow white's mirror said you know like that's what that's what it does right so don't don't they ever have to worry don't you ever wonder why it's a part of me that tells you, oh, don't you ever, don't ever say die, never, never say die. So real quick, let's talk about what, what the song is about, Josh. Why don't you go first? What, what, what do we got so far? Well, you know me. I'm the guy that breaks down all the lyrics. I truthfully have the time I don't even know what the lyrics are. I know the melodies. I think that's why I love Ozzy so much. For sure. I just always took this song as being self-reflective about the status of the band. Yeah. I had a British accent there. Status. Did you hear that? The status of the band. Status of the band. Yeah. <laughs> and just the self-reflection of what's going on. You know, yeah, absolutely. For me. So here's another lyric that that's definitely not correct, but I, I'm pretty confident and I the have a partners it in crime part. Can I back it? I'm sorry, Dan. I mean, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Like, you're accusing me of shit that you do also. Right. You know what I mean? Like you're no better than I am. And that's all four of them. And they and they all I, you know own up to that now. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And I also think it's about someone that is, you know, if you just re- look at it from face value, someone that's looking for answers, how do, you know, we need help and, you know, but don't give up, even though life isn't going, you know, you're taken for a ride, maybe by the government or by, by somebody, you know, but don't ever say that you got to keep fighting. And I think that's kind of, you know, even if you're Snow White, Smira said partners in crime, even if you're complicit, you know, you can't give up, you got to keep fighting. Yeah. All right, the or next one. No one's innocent. Same thing. No one's innocent. Yeah, it is not. No one's innocent. <laughs> <laughs> next lyric is Sunday's satisfaction, Monday's home and dry. That's what the lyric is. Uh, I've seen so many different variations, and I've not seen that one, but I've known that lyric my whole life. That is definitely what it is. Sunday satisfaction. Next line. Monday's home and dry. The truth next line is, on, is my favorite. Yeah, right truth here. is on the doorstep. Welcome in the lies. Welcome Love in it. the lie. Yeah. yeah. Love I'll, it. It's, it's fucking, that's poetry. Dude. It is poetry. It is my that favorite is song of the song. That's my favorite line too, Josh. Truth it's, is on the doorstep. Absolutely. Welcome in the lies. Holy yeah. shit. How powerful is that? Just, yeah. it's amazing. So do you think it's Monday's home and dry? 
I think so. Yeah. yeah. Listen to Ozzy very clearly. That's what he's talking about. Because it wouldn't make sense for him to say Sunday and not Monday in that way. Yeah. I've never understood why people haven't figured that out. All right. All dressed up in sorrow. Got no place to go. Hold tight. Do it right. Taking it slow. I love that whole verse, to be honest. Because, again, it's about somebody that, you know, has got nowhere to go. He's lonely. He is, his life is not going right. But, you know. Don't they ever have to worry? Don't you ever wonder yeah. why? It's part of me that tells you don't ever say die. Great lyrics, man. Geezer yes, is a fucking master. Can I just say that? We call Tony the coolest guy in the world. We know Ozzy is the greatest melody writer ever. Geezer is a fucking master. No one has written lyrics in the world of metal like Geezer Butler. Nobody. So the next line, I do want to say... As I said earlier, on um, as I'm reading here, it says panic, silver linings. You said painting. I've always said painting when I sing it. Like if I'm doing the song, I say painting. But I, I read panic because it's what's on here, but I, yeah. I do think it's paintings also. Yeah. Painting. Well, painting, silver linings, writings on the wall, right? Just makes yeah. sense to me. Definitely. Uh, children get together. You can save us all. That's kind of a throwback a little bit to children of the grave, right? Children get together. Absolutely. You can save us all. I never really put that together until I just read that lyric, by the way. Futures on the corner showing us our time that is the hardest lyric to understand in the whole song and not to mention the the, the version on apple music says futures on the corner throwing us a die yeah it's awful because that's like that ain't what it says i believe showing us our time is correct slow down slow down slow down turn around everything's fine that is uh, these lyrics are incredible guys if you're not really paying attention to what geezer is writing i got i got the chill bumps right now to be honest and it's awesome. That is a great verse, man. Talking about don't give up. Our children's going to save us. There's future. Life is bright. Don't, don't give up. Amazing. And then, of course, that, you know, we go back to that uh, solo and out. How great is that fucking bridge, too? Oh, yeah, man. Oh, oh so catchy. Yeah. So catchy. So to catchy. me, this is kind of an Aussie don't solo you song. Ever say die. Yeah, it's do, the best. Do, do. It's, it's so good, man. So, one of the things that I really noticed is, we always talk about Black Sabbath being having movements. They they don't follow formulas. Ozzy's solo career, very formulaic, and I don't mean that yeah. in a bad way. Maybe not some of the stuff on the first two records, but after that, for sure. You know, verse, yeah. chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, you know, bridge. You know, and I have no problem with that. I, I That's how I write. But Black Sabbath, we, we know that's what set them apart in the early days. 100%. By the time we get here, except for one song, maybe two, but I'd say one, yeah. this album is incredibly formulaic. Yeah. And and that changed because they were trying to be more modern with the time. Yeah. And that's kind of what they did with Dio. There's a few that maybe uh, have parts, but a lot of those are formulaic also, I feel like. Super. Just trying to get back into the into the times with it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So let's move on to the incredible Johnny Blade. Why don't you bring us in, Josh, since I'm talking so much today? Okay. I, man, have at it, Dan. You're the one that's read like eight fucking books to get ready for this episode. <laughs> like, you you were fine. Johnny Blade is a track that, if I'm being honest, I'm not as high on this one as a lot of other people are. That I'm, making shock you. I'm making yeah, a face. I'm making a face right now. Yeah, I, know, I know. And even Geezer, when I read that section a minute ago, he's like, there's great tracks like Johnny Blade. It's okay. But Johnny Blade, heavy synthesizer, has a very, you know, just late 70s, beginning. early 80s sound. You know, I know. It just, it's not one that for me ever caught on like the other. I still love it, of course. I mean, fuck. You can look about Black Illusion and I love it. So, I mean, you know, I still love Wait a track. minute. Wait a fucking minute. <laughs> you are not putting Johnny Blade on no. the same level as Black <laughs> Illusion. No, no, no. Please. No, no, no. Okay. I'm saying I still love it. Uh, I still love Black Illusion, so of course I yeah. love Johnny Blade. Is okay. what I'm trying to say. But it's to one of my. I, I don't like it like a lot of Sabbath fans do, but obviously a fun track about, like Geezer said a minute ago, uh, Bill's brother who liked to fight with knives and shit, right? Apparently or something like that. It's a guy in the streets. He's he he lives in the streets and he's tough and he's tough from living on the streets. And in this era of time, like gang fighting was a big ordeal like you saw that a lot on the news and stuff and gang fights and gang bangs and stabbing people and switchblade knives and shit so just you know a story about that so like bruce springsteen did a lot of songs did he not about gangs and shit jungle land and some of those yeah, yeah, a, lot, sure. a lot of that kind of stuff you know this is more like the 50s though like elvis era right you know you picture a guy with the, with the big pompadour bringing out a switchblade <laughs> you know so 
uh, Bill and Ozzy came up with the character Johnny Blade. They they were just they loved the whole concept of it, and then they presented it to Keezer, who wound up writing the lyrics about it based they, on Bill's brother. But they created their own character named Johnny Blade. I fucking love this song. I'm sorry, Josh. This is one of the most underrated songs in Black Sabbath history. Fine, the first 45 seconds with that Don Airy synthesizer, uh, very you know, it's like the Mr. Crowley before Mr. Crowley, right? Don Airy plays them both, and but, dude, once Bill Ward's rolling snare comes in behind that riff, how are you not fucking going crazy? Absolutely crazy. So here's my big complaint on the record. We talked about the production. Guitars are too low. Piano is too high. Everything is too high. The guitars are too low. And I just wish Tony's guitars were fucking cranking on this song because the riff yeah. is so goddamn good. It's amazing. Yeah. It, it, it's 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 buried for sure. It but is now, too in buried. The, the whole half record. of the song, the da 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 da. There's where I'm like, at that That's point, I'm like, part yes, of the song. Yeah, the second part. I like the, the whole. I love the whole song. The Bill, but, Bill saves, not saves. Bill is the fucking hero here. His drums are incredible on the song. Yeah. That rolling snare is so good. Once it, when the song starts, man, it's so good. If I'm being honest, <laughs> the the part of the song I'm not so crazy. It's the intros and eh. honestly, I hate to say it, it's Aussie's chorus, Johnny Blade. I just that's where I kind of check out on it a little bit. I love everything else. I love the first root melodies. I love that the, the second half of the song fucking rocks. That second half fucking rules. I love that part. I love it's, it because I it's love the chorus. I love Ozzy's strain on it. He's barely hitting that note. He even cracks yeah. somewhere on there. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, you know, he For definitely sure. is. That's at the fucking height of his range, right Shit. there. Man. You know, I love it. This is this isn't a you know Ryan and over the mountain situation where he just truly hates that track. This is you know I love it, man. I'm just saying. So let's let's tell the tale of Johnny Blade real quick. So the lyrics are a little bit more easier to understand on this one. Tortured and twisted, he walks the streets alone. People avoid him. They know the streets his home. Cold blade of silver. His eyes they burn so wild. Mean as a tiger, society's own child. Those that tried to, I almost sang it, those that tried to burn him paid. You don't do that to Johnny Blade. This, I'm sorry, man. I love this song. The lyrics are fucking great. Yeah, they the lyrics are, are excellent. Yeah, they are. Yeah. He's the meanest guy around his town. When looking, he will cut you down. Sing it, Johnny John. Blade. <laughs> Johnny Blade. That is a hard note to hit, my friend. Oh, for sure. I oh, just, my God. It, I don't know why. Why would I mean it is only like two parts. It doesn't really repeat I it know. I do I truly do love like you'll see when I do my rankings later. It's not like it's the last track or anything. I'm just saying. Better not be Jesus. All right. Life has no meaning and death's his only friend. Will fate surprise him? Where will he meet his end? He feels so bitter. Yes, he's so full of hate. To die in the gutter. I guess that's Johnny's fate. God, these are poetry poet these lyrics are incredible, man. This tells a great story. Rivals all across the land, he kills them with his knife in hand. And then once again, the chorus, he's the meanest guy around his town. When Luck and Evil cut you down, Johnny Blade. Johnny, Johnny Blade. Blade, Johnny Blade. So you see, you couldn't even hit that note. You had to change it. <laughs> it is no hot. Note. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where we get classic Black Sabbath. Now the song completely changes. God, is good, man. I love the whole mm -hmm. first part too. But so now we go to... Uh, the second half of the song. Great melody here too. God damn, Ozzy kills the song. Well, you yes. know that Johnny's a spider and his web is the city at night. He's a victim of modern frustration. That's the reason he's so ready to fight. He's the one who should be afraid what will happen to you, Johnny Blade. Go that groove, dude. Da -da 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 -da. Bill was fucking just killing it. Groove, man, in the pocket, letting it fucking rip that now, part. I'm just Imagine if the guitars were cranking on that, man. Yeah. It would be a classic Black Sabbath song. They're just so buried. I don't know why Tony has those guitars so buried, man. I know he didn't mix the record, but if there was one Black Sabbath record that needed a desperate mix, they remixed Technical Ecstasy, why not fucking Never Say Die? They could have this record sounding so much better, man. It's, it's kind of a shame. It is a shame. Uh, oh, he knows his future's decided, and he ain't going to change it no way. He was born to die in the gutter. He'll keep fighting to the end of his days. 
great part here. Been alone all through his life. His only friend is a switchblade knife. He's the one who should be afraid. What will happen to you, Johnny Blade? Now, here's the cool part. I love the outro, man. Here's something cool too, right? You fool the poop. You feel, whoops. You fool the people who's fooling who. And it dawned on me who's fooling who becomes a Ozzy Billboard yeah. Tony Iommi song, you know, a bunch of years later, which I thought was pretty cool. It's time to listen. The fool is you. What a great ending. So obviously these lyrics are very straightforward about someone that's, you know, getting into gang fights, yeah. loosely based on Bill's brother. But they all were very friendly with Bill's brother. They all got along with him, so they knew him. So, you know, what a great tale. I, I just think the best part of the song is yet to come because that guitar solo, in my opinion, might be, ready for this? My favorite Tony Iommi guitar solo. Number one. Career. Number one. Gosh, Number man, that is, one. that is saying a lot. Dude, that guitar solo is awesome. It starts to fucking trip. Let me be clear. I do love this song. <laughs> when I say I don't love it, like I, there's parts of it that annoy me, but I, he, he lets it go for sure. Tony, and there's a lot of feeling in the solo. And too. I was gonna say there's feeling and there's groove in his playing. Yes. It's, it's not just shred. It's like a groove shred. It, he's really he's letting it go, man. And maybe Tony saw that guitar playing was starting to step up a little bit. You know, he, he Tony can shred when he wants. He did it well, in the '80s. He he takes a step up on technical ecstasy. Even though a lot of people shit on these records, but that's the record where he was like, I'm going to take my playing to another level. Agreed. It's like Dirty Woman. What a great guitar solo on Dirty oh, Woman. For sure. Yeah, that's also one up, up there for sure. But I think that's the record where he said, I'm going to I'm gonna push myself. And Johnny Blade has got the perfect complex. It's complex. I don't think he shreds like that anywhere else in his whole yeah. career. And, and great feeling. I talk about it a lot on the show. One thing that helps a great guitar solo is a great rhythm. It's got a killer rhythm behind him right there. Yeah, it's a lot it of energy. Really does. It's one of those where it makes your heart race a little bit. It's just kind of like, you know, you, you feel Bill's that. Bill's fills, my God. Listen to Bill's fills. Uh, it's, it starts during the, um, you know, the the outro with, with You Fool the People. And Bill is just going crazy, man. It's so good. Oh, the song. Sorry. We didn't Amazing. make that thing. Bill's fills. <laughs> <laughs> Bills fails. Bills fails. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I might have said that like like I'm from Kentucky. Awesome. Anything else you want to say about Johnny Blade? No, nah, man. I, I truly do love the track. I don't want shit down the road because I do love it. It's just not but like when Geezer says there's some good tracks in there like Johnny Blade. I'm going, really? That's the one you choose? I think yeah, there's fuck yeah, three does. or four or five better. That's mm. it. I do love it. And there's sections of it. Like you said, Tony Solo. That whole second half fucking rules. So, yeah, the lyrics are fun. Yeah, it's, it's a good track. Well, I like it, too, because this, even though it has a chorus, and I know you don't like it, and both parts have a chorus, actually, right? Because, you know, you have the part where, you know, been alone all through his life, which is kind of mm -hmm. like the second part of the chorus. Yeah. But totally two different songs, which Again, I a love. song with two different choruses, right? Yeah, two completely yeah. different choruses. So. so fucking cool, man. Awesome. Yeah. All right, up next is the emotional Junior's Eyes. So, obviously, we talked about this one. Go ahead, Josh. No, go ahead, man. I'm waiting on you. So, this one we talked about started in 1977 with the boys. Ozzy quit. They wrote this song with Dave Walker. There's versions of it online. I'm sure you guys are diehard fans and have heard it. Let's talk about the Dave Walker version first. <laughs> Josh, why don't you go ahead? I've go. heard it, but my goodness, it's been 10 years ago. Okay. Uh, it wasn't overly memorable for me. I, I, you know, I'm an Aussie guy, so it kind of was like, eh. Even yeah. without being an Aussie guy, and listen, I think Dave Walker is a great singer, actually. I mean, he has got a great voice. But to me, with Dave Walker fronting the band, it sounds like any old run-of-the-mill 1975 right. rock band. It does. Yeah. I'm sorry. Even the song isn't memorable. Tony doesn't have a solo in that version. It's just very okay. You know, it's like, yeah, it's a fine song. Almost like the wildlife version of Shot in the Dark. <laughs> well, right. yeah. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah, that's not even close because Ozzy, yeah, same thing. Great, great yeah. analogy, man. Great. Yeah. That's perfect. Um, so yeah, I to me, it's a fine song. People that think it's better than Ozzy's need to have their head fucking examined. The lyrics aren't that great. And, you know, Dave Walker was writing the lyrics. Geezer, right away, when somebody comes in the writes lyrics, you know, Geezer is like, fine, take them. You know, that's what he does. But it's it's about money and being poor. And, the, you know, it's all fine. I mean, that's the best word I could say. I don't like hear it and go, ugh. But it is nowhere near 
the emotional roller coaster that Ozzy's version is. Yeah. Dan smokes these fucking deep dives, doesn't he? I just let him roll, man. <laughs> I'm truthfully, sorry, man. No, no, I, I don't mean you're ever speaking. I mean, you, this, these are where you excel. I think it's these deep dives. And, Thanks, man. Yeah, and I, I'm definitely better being the side man on these and just letting you go and chiming in because you, you have such a, uh, well, you research and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you mean I come for prayer? <laughs> like, I've not listened to Dave Walker sing that in a decade. I probably should have broke it out and listened to it. It's been, it's been a minute. But I do remember it didn't connect with me at all. Yeah. Uh, but I, there was also a time in my life I refused to listen to Ronnie Dio because I just was too, yeah. you know, I just wouldn't do it. So, but no, uh, I do recall that to me it was just Ms. Mundane. It was, it was fine, but it wasn't, you know, the, 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 the smoker that the one we know from the album is, that is one of my favorite Black Sabbath songs of all time. Yeah, mine too. It is emotion filled. And this has always yeah. been my argument is people out there that rip on Ozzy, oh, you don't do anything, you don't do anything. This is the perfect example of what Ozzy brings to the Black Sabbath material. And I know they're special. All four of them are special in their own way. But I fucking tell you right now, I don't, you got, you guys can strike me dead. I don't give a fuck. If Ozzy was not the singer of Black Sabbath in 1969, they would not be the heavy metal legends they are today. That is a fact. I don't care if Dio was in 1969 Black Sabbath. It would have been run of the mill, nothing that special. Ozzy yeah. is what made them sound, and Tony and the heaviness, but Ozzy in particular, nobody sounds like this guy. And, and that's what makes him so special and so different and probably so hated as well by the fucking mainstream media because he didn't sound like Dave Walker, which they probably would have preferred because it's like yeah. typical 1970s rock and roll. And mm -hmm. that's not what Ozzy is. But Ozzy brings so much to the table with his emotion, his vocals, his melody lines. I don't care, man. Listen to these two songs back to back and tell me you don't want to cry after listening to Junior's Eyes, Ozzy's version. Right. right. And how sweet of, of, you know, Geezer, he had his own, uh, you know, passion for Jack. And, you know, the, we talked about that earlier. The band loved him. But how sweet of him, man. They're at a time where the band is literally at each other's throats. They're hardly speaking. But Geezer still wrote these lyrics to be reflective of Ozzy to his to his father, which is fucking excellent. You know, and that that was really not sweet, for, you know, at that time to do that despite everything going on. But again, emotion, heartfelt track all the way through, man. It, it's it's classic. Yeah, honestly, think about it this way: Geezer was so done writing lyrics at this point mentally. We're on track three, and this is going to be the third song where we're going to be like these lyrics are fucking smoking yeah. and how many songs do you know in your entire life that can literally do this yeah and you're just like fuck oh, yeah. it's awesome <laughs> and you can deliver it and make you do that you know yeah. what i'm saying 100 like, percent. and that's oh man when he goes into that fucking chorus dude yeah. it's so fucking good that's those goosebumps we talk about right there that that is it right there you know yeah. he barely sings on the, the chorus on dave walker's version is nothing it's awful compared to what ozzy came up with let's be perfectly honest so a couple of cool things the only thing i don't like is the fade in i don't know why i've never liked the fade in I'm you know a fan of that either in i feel like the, I, I feel like in my brain the song never gets loud as what johnny blade was and i don't know why i feel that way but I'm not a big fan of the fade in. Matter of fact, Dave Walker's version does not start like that. It's totally different. But that bass groove is very jazzy and it's really, really killer. Let me ask you, as far as anything you've read, did Geezer write? I mean, also he wrote his bass lick, but like did the song grow from that? No, I think it was all Tony's. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of featured a little bit as it's fading in. The bass I'm is sure. kind of up front in the mix and stuff. Yeah, I'm sure Geezer wrote his bass line, of course. Well, I mean, but, I, I know that, but I'm saying yeah. you think the song was written around that. Was that maybe the foundation? It could have. They Geezer never really cool said. cool bass line, and, and they just were kind of, you know, and Tony's yeah. just kind of riffing over it and just came up with little things to maybe, you know. It sounds like that would be logical. Cause it it does. Yeah, I, I would say that's probably spot on, Josh, but I have yeah. not read that. Yeah, I haven't either. Yeah, but it's it's definitely bass driven. But, you know, he uh, Geezer, I'm sorry, Tony's using a lot of wah on the song which is really cool you know i love his effect on wah another great guitar solo by tony i, I just think the breakdown is incredible so uh, again written about jack osborne died a couple of you know a year earlier 1977 they, they had started it then but i don't think he's read lyrics yet but that melody you can feel ozzy's pain ozzy's emotion uh, 
anybody, and I, you know, I've not lost my father, thank God, but this song is going to be very yeah. tough. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be almost impossible to, to listen to once it happens. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Kind of like My Little Man Grows on You When You Have Children. This That's is going right. To be the opposite. A hundred percent. And yeah. I just don't know. God damn it. I know we're an Aussie podcast, but I don't know of another singer that brings emotion out like Ozzy does. And this is maybe the antithesis of it. Like this is the zenith of Ozzy's emotion. I just emotion think emotion and charisma is what's always made him. Yeah. A hundred percent. And p- people don't like this song or Ozzy in this song. You're just not an Ozzy fan. I'm sorry. Yeah. He doesn't touch you. Like he touches millions of people around the world. And is this not one of Tony's simplest rhythms on the on the uh, chorus? Yeah. But it's fucking awesome. But that's all you, you know, need sometimes. As a songwriter myself, I have to remind you have to remind yourself sometimes. Keep it simple. Always. Like, it, it, yeah. It, we don't want to. It's like a drummer. Drummers better. always want to. Yeah. You know, like just simple. Just, you know, just, you know, simplify it. Well, it pisses me off because Tony talks about he was able to do that with Dio, but he was doing it here. You know, he mm-hmm. get he let Ozzy shine on that melody and let Ozzy sing around that simple riff. So he yeah. was doing that. So, uh, you know, a great point. I love it. All right, let's go through the uh, lyrics real quick. Junior's eyes looked up to the skies in tears. He prayed that his maker, the giver and taker would hear. Junior sighed as his hand reached out to the sky. Junior cried the day that his best friend died. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that that is just oh, these are definitely we'll eventually do a geezers episode where we do his favorite lyrics. Way up there for me, man. Yeah. Way. For sure. I agree totally. Yeah. You're coming home again tomorrow. I'm sorry it won't be for long. With all the pain I've watched you live within, I'll try my hardest not to cry when it's time to say goodbye. So a lot of things, a lot of things people don't realize. This song's actually about Ozzy going home to say goodbye to his father before he passes, right? I always used to think it was after he passed, but that hmm. chorus is clearly saying, you know, you're coming home again tomorrow. I'm sorry, I won't be for long. With all the pain I've watched you live within, but I'll try my hardest not to cry when it is time to say goodbye. I've always took it more like going home for a funeral. Like it, it won't be for long. I'm it's coming home again tomorrow. Sorry, it won't be for long. Like you're coming home for the funeral, maybe head at their house or something. Yeah, I used and to think then, that way too. I'm starting mm-hmm. to think maybe it's to say goodbye on his deathbed. Either or it's well, it's okay. very similar. Yeah. All right. Junior's eyes, they couldn't disguise the pain. See, here we go, Josh. His father was leaving, and Junior's grieving again. Innocent eyes watched the man who gave everything. Junior's sorrow, he knew what tomorrow would bring. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Right? The deathbed. Yeah, it makes much more sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. Li- I never, mean, good. No, I love this because I, I, I've never, I'll read them, but to sit down and actually think about it and discuss it with somebody like that, yeah, it's, it's kind of clear. Yeah, I agree. And then again, they're coming home again tomorrow. I'm sorry, it won't be for long. What a great chorus. You nailed it. With all the pain I've watched you live within, oh. I'll try my hardest not to cry when it is time to say goodbye. Even before I knew Sabbath's catalog, like I would go on to know it. And I, like I said, never said that was one of my first ones also. That chorus got me from like day one. one. It's like, dude, that's fucking great. It's good stuff. Great call. Then we have the great solo, which is incredible. Great breakdown. All right, then we come back to verse three. Junior's eyes looked into the skies once more. Now he knew well this life was hell for sure. Desperately tried his fingertips Stretch to the stars. Yeah. I, I literally got goosebumps right now, man. Uh, awesome. That little yeah gets me every time. Reaching for reason along with the time and the scars. And then, of course, one more time. Hats off to Geezer, man. That is gold. I know. And it's so amazing that Geezer's always irritated writing lyrics. And he's so I know. good at them. It's like the best. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know me. <laughs> Lennon, Lennon, Geezer. They're two How best How can you players. hate this so fucking bad? And I think that's why he didn't want to do another album with Sabbath. I think he just didn't want to write more lyrics. And you're so fucking good at it, dude. Like, I, I just don't understand. Yeah, I but agree. Yeah, great song, man. And, you know, did you ever hear the joke when Zach covered this and then, like, the acoustic version? And Ozzy's like, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Ozzy's so honest. Because, like, Zach had mentioned 
covering another side of the song, and Ozzy said, as long as it's better than Junior's Eyes was or something, like he gave him some shit over it. But what a Crazy. great song. Sorry we're going so long, guys, but you know how we get in the deep dive. This is like, this is where we live and breathe, man. This is why we're here. Never Say Die. We are now just finished with track three. We're moving on to track four. Interesting enough, interesting enough, I think all three of these songs are like over six minutes long too. So yeah, yeah. they are. Johnny Blade Jr.'s Eyes Hard Road, all over six minutes. They're epics, man. All three of them. And you got that poppy single to start side one. All incredible. Love it. Yeah. Why don't you introduce a hard road, Josh? Yeah, so that comes into a hard road. Another one that's kind of groove oriented. Tony simplified back a little bit. You know, dun, 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 dun. you know, Tony kind of he was not the riff guy on this album as much at all. And it looked like you said the the songs are more formulaic, and he's actually playing more of a melodic intro rather than riffs. Right. Uh, Hard Road's another one, man. It's taking me from day one, just like Junior's Eyes. And those were the, when I first bought this record. Those were the two, Junior's okay. Eyes and a Hard Road. Over I never say die. Them. Well, and those those three, they're right okay. there together. Those are the three. Good call. But uh, a Hard Road, man. Again, another. This song sounds like a single, you know, and it was. It was. I think it, it could have been a bigger single. I feel like it maybe wrong place and time, just you know where, where they were at the moment. Well, six and a half minute but single too. That's a ballsy. That's tough. <laughs> yeah. That's tough. It's got a single vibe. Put it that way. Yeah. Did the edited down version for three and a half minutes, but you know, again, great chorus, great melody, a simplistic song, but it's it, this song to me. I say this all the time on the deep dives. There's that one song that this is what the album sounds like. A hard road for me is never say die. If you say, what does the album sound like? I play a hard road. Wow. That's great. Yeah. It's, I think it's, you're right. What a groovy riff, right? Dum, dum, na, na, da, dum, na, na, na. It's such a cool riff. I love it. Kia B. I'm talking to Steven before that. Dun, 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 oh yeah. You know, then in the just back, in that beat, you know, yeah, right? Yeah. So dun, dun, groovy. Dun. And Bill's just in the pocket. Bill's so, f- Bill's got the swing. Everyone talks about that. He's in the pocket like a motherfucker too, though, man. Like he, He's, a he's so in the pocket right there. Bill, Bill is it? He's so underappreciated. He, in the he's not world. a he's not a typical drummer. So when he's in the pocket, he's like in the pocket in Bill lingo. You know what I mean? Yeah. Only the way Bill could be in the pocket. You know, not yeah. like you know ACDC. You know, or Phil yeah. Rudd. It's it's totally different. It's and different it's so, in the pocket. Yeah. I was gonna mention not to jump back, but like Junior's eyes. You were talking about Bill's drums, how good they sound on this record. Going into the solo yeah and the, 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 the oh yeah those, that feel he sounds it's fucking thunder man it sounds so good yeah bill is definitely i believe personally the star on this no question yeah. about it he is drumming this is one of my favorite drum songs of all i mean dram, drum albums of all time i think bill shines big time on it yeah um yeah i, I bill's think feels on bill's feels <laughs> eyes are awesome <laughs> um, we need to uh trademark that bill's feels uh Awesome song. I, I think, again, another one about the band at the time. I think it's people think it's glamorous to be a rock star and, and it's a hard road. And I think, you know, life is hard sometimes. I think that's what these lyrics are. This actually has the very ending, my favorite group of lyrics of all time by Geezer. It's my favorite stanza of all time. Wow. Great lyrics at the end. And we'll get to that when we read them. But I think this song's great. I do wish Ozzy wasn't as nasally on this. I don't think he had to sing it like that. Like this is the one example where Ozzy could have taken, like the voice he he uses on the cor- the bridge where he's singing, um, oh it's you know it's a hard road carry your own load. If he would have sang the whole song like that, it might have been a little better to me because he is very nasally on this one. Mm-hmm. Oh man, you know he's just got that. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah he's singing. Oh, man, crying, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where I wish they would have worked with him a little bit more. He didn't have to be so nasally on it. It's a great melody, great song. Great guitar solo. If I think he Al- went high almost like he does on, say, Hole in the Sky, where he's really belting it. Oh, man, crying, young it's what man. He's trying to do. I just yeah. don't think he can get there. You think he was trying yeah. to do that? And that's kind of what, what got it there? Come yeah. Back. That's what I think he's trying to do. And I just don't think he, he's, he's hitting it. Um, I think this guitar solo is maybe the second best solo off the record. It is simple, but catchy as shit, man. I love this guitar solo. It, G- Tony is writing really, really good riffs and leads on this record. More leads than riffs. I'm sorry. His lead mm-hmm. is on the song is catchy. He's just classic. I love the way he comes out of it. It's almost the way uh, Randy comes out of Steal Away the Night, if you listen to it, actually. Listen to the way they come out of the solo together. It's very, very cool. 
Uh, awesome, awesome song. I think that this one is very underappreciated. Nobody talks about Hard Road. One little difference in the UK, the song is called Hard Road. In the States, it's called A Hard Road. Just as a, you know, we got to bring you all the information here, folks. Yeah. All right, let me go through the lyrics real quick. All men crying, young men dying. World still turns as father, as father time looks on, on and on. Children playing, dreamers praying. Laughter turns to tears as love has gone. Has it gone? Love that. Great stuff. It's fucking great. Oh my Again, God. Four for four. Right yeah. book. It's yeah, amazing. amazing. Oh, it's a hard road. Oh, it's a hard road. Whirlwind churning, lovers learning. On this path of life, we can't back down. Is it wrong? Widows weeping, babies sleeping. Life becomes the singer and the song. Sing along. Beautiful. Love that great line. Stuff, man. Great mm -hmm. stuff. Then the chorus again. So here's something that's kind of cool. Then it, it kind of does a bridge, solo bridge. And I, I love that little structure, right? Why make the hard road? Why can't we be friends, right? Totally talking about the band. No need to hurry, we'll meet in the end, which was kind of prophetic, right? At the end of the day. Then we got that ripping guitar solo. And then again, why make the hard road? Why can't we be friends? No need to worry. Let's sing it again. Very, very cool. And then it ends with uh, brothers sharing, mothers caring, nighttime falling victim to the dawn. That is a cool line. That's lyric, cool, man. isn't it? <laughs> that is I was thinking cool that lyric. too, because it's such yeah. a cool line. So I don't know what yeah. he says here. It says shadow small, but that's not what Ozzy says. I cannot pick out that lyric. So if you know what he says, let us know, people. But it, I, I don't know what he says there. Days are crawling, time is calling to the earth another life is gone that is wrong actually it says days are crawling time is calling to the earth another life is wronged that's what he says there Lo love lines drawn positive he says wronged and then we got the chorus again and then now my favorite lyric here we'll talk about tony singing here at this point too forget all your sorrow don't live in the past and look to the future because life goes too fast you know to me that is as poetic as poetry can be. Maybe my favorite stanza ever written by anybody. Forget all your sorrow. Don't live in the past and look to the future because life goes too fast, you know. Amazing. Yeah. It's right? An, it's impressive shit, right? Yeah, right there. So let's talk about the ending, right? We know Tony's, the only song Tony and Geezer sang on. Tony, Geezer couldn't stop laughing the whole time Tony's singing, which is, can't you just see that in the studio? Right? <laughs> <That'd be crazy. laughs> yeah, totally. So who do you think is singing the ooze? You know, ooh, they get start kind of up there, right? That's probably Bill. I think it's Ozzy. It's either Bill so? or Ozzy. I think it could be Ozzy. I used to mm -hmm. think it was Bill, but I was listening to it today, and I thought, why wouldn't they let the lead singer do the ooze? You know, but it could be Bill. You I know? could hear Bill doing it for sure. I don't yeah. know. It could, it, definitely one of the two of them, but I, I, I want to go Bill. Yeah. Let us know, listeners. Who do you think it is? Yeah, who do you think is doing the ooze? I've never really talked yeah. about it before. Ooh. Ooh. I haven't even thought about it before, really, but now that you mention it, they're, they're all over the place. They're all over the so, place. Yeah. Because the band's singing, oh, yeah, it's a, uh, oh, and then Ozzy's singing that great frontline lyric. Um, yep. And then somebody's doing the ooze as an overdub, which is so cool. It might so, be Yoko Ono. No, <laughs> definitely not. Please. Uh, Geezer says it's about the band, but you can obviously relate it to a lot of things about just how life can be hard sometimes, you know. Yeah. But uh, Geezer is four for four. That ends side one. Again, I think, you know, obviously side one of Paranoid, maybe the greatest side one of in the history of heavy metal or, or music in general, but goddamn side one to never say die. It is absolutely stellar. Yeah, great shit, man. Like yeah. you said, for an album that's this, you know, universally shit on. And, and then they wrote that, that day. <laughs> they wrote it that day and, and recorded it. You know what I mean? Like it yeah. took them a while to record. So it's not like they were writing it that day and they were there for four days, but the fact that they were coming up with that shit in the cinema and then this is it. This is the recording. I mean, yeah. In, in the middle fun. of the freezing cold, and it's like you're out there really enjoying yourself right now. So, yeah, totally. So that and brings side two doesn't side start off that two. bad. Yeah. yeah well, now we have the riff song. This, to me, is the riff song, right? Tony doesn't have a lot of riffs on this record. I think Johnny Blade has some riffs, even though they're buried. But this is the one that you're like, oh, yeah, Tony's in the house. Tony's in the house. <laughs> Go ahead and introduce it. <laughs> so Shockwave is, you know, oddly though, that's the song I probably listen to the least on the record. And I don't know why that is really. The whole record? Probably. I mean, aside wow. from like Breakout or something. Uh, maybe Swinging the Chain. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it just it's never been one that really stuck with me a whole lot. Like honestly, it, I'm having a hard time even hearing the riff in my head right now. I'm yeah, no, 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 uh, pitch when he's saying there's no reason exactly that should have been on hard road just yeah. like that. yeah that would have been perfect yeah, yeah. that would worked really good I, you know i think ozzy sounds great on it it is more of a heavier song than some of the others definitely more of a traditional Maybe i the love the, song on the record yeah, yeah I, I think so i think that's fair yeah. to say i love the doubled vocal or it could be even triple vocal you know there's no reason for you to run and, yeah you know almost like right. harmony you know definitely uh and for very very different for Black Sabbath to do that, you know. Yeah. Look behind you. I love so, that song too. Fuck, I'm just fucking around. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the crazy thing about this song. This is the song to me that is got no rhyme or reason with structure. This, have you ever paid attention to the structure of this song? I mean, not really, other than just jamming it and you yeah. Know. Typically, you just put it on and jam it, but you're going to be blown away when we go through the song. There's like seven parts, and hardly none of them are repeated. It's fucking incredible. It just kind of goes. and just... It just goes. It's like this song has so many riffs in it. It could be some later band's whole album number of riffs. Because like you, know? you take that the intro there, you know, all that first melody. Then it goes into the can't escape the faith of the chosen one look behind you. Then it just kind of shifts parts. There's another part in between you know, it. Freezing yeah. your body is the answer, right? Yeah. This, but it just mind. shifts. Yeah, it yeah. It never really goes back to any of that. Yeah. It never, ever goes back to any of those parts in the song. And it drives me crazy because there's no reason to run is one of, I just think that melody is like, oh my God. Yeah, that's good shit. It's yeah. good shit. And I almost wish they would have stayed on a little bit more. It might've mm -hmm. been more iconic, um, but I almost think they get a little too inventive and too creative for their own sake here. Cause the song is just so all over the place. It's yeah. crazy. Um, that's definitely riffs. the peak of the song. I think this, that opening lot, those, you know, the, that chorus, or the, that verse right there and, and the melody is the hook of the song for me. And I think the ending too. Yeah, that riff is also killer. Yeah, yeah, that's another one. Who's doing that? Is that Bill? Who is that? It's definitely crazy. But it's time they finally, Dan. It's time we finally let them know. That's Dan doing that. Oh yeah, definitely. He was there. He was in Toronto doing those. I was a baby. What a great! It is a great song. So let's go through the parts and the lyrics, and this, you know, then we could kind of, you know go through it and so we can really say how many different parts there are. So we got, well, first of all, before we start, this song I believe is about a person that dies and and his soul is being battled between good and evil. That's what I believe this song is about. I think that's fair enough. Very sci-fi, very fucking geezer. So like the first four songs all have like thought provoking lyrics, you know, don't give up, you know, a, a story about a guy in a gang, Junior's eyes about his, Ozzy's father, hard road being tough. And then we got straight up, you know, sci-fi geezer right here. And they're, they're really cool lyrics, man. So there is no reason for you to run. You can't escape the fate of the chosen one. Black moon rising in a blood red sky. This time you realize that you're going to die. That part is incredible. Maybe the best part of the song. Wouldn't you agree? I agree. That, to me, that's the highlight of the song right there. And it's right out of the gate. I wish they'd go back yep. to it. Part one. 100%. Let's count them, Josh. Now we go to part okay. two. Freezing your body is your answer. That's what you plan to do. Floating in time, you cheat your master. You're on your own going through. Part two. Dun, dun. Yeah, so many different <laughs> parts. Part, part three. Wind of mist has taken over your mind, and you think you're on your own. Don't believe you are the only one here. Look around. You're not alone. Crazy, right? Feel the forces. Now we're going to part four. Feel the forces from another world. Ghostly shadows fill your mind. Evil power hanging over you as you freeze. You're a child. Look behind you. So that's not right. I don't think. As Is you it? freeze your power life in time. You? Yeah, as you freeze your yeah, as you freeze your life in time. Look behind you. Thank you. Sometimes you read these lyrics and you just know, hey, that wasn't right. So let me get it again. Evil power, evil evil power hanging over you as you freeze your life in time. Look behind you. So that's now part. Are we on part four or part five already? Four. We're now on five. That that was four. Yep. And I love how they kind of bring like the acoustics behind it, kind of Sabbath, bloody Sabbathy on that part, right? Very cool. Somebody's calling. Someone is near. 
feel yourself falling, falling with fear. You tell yourself you're dreaming. You realize you're screaming. You know that this, oh, that's a, now we go to another part. You know that this shouldn't happen to you. You tell yourself that it just can't yeah. be true, but there is nothing you can do. So now that was just that's part six. six. Yes, yeah. that's six. You know, and, and that were poppy. You know this shouldn't happen to you. Yeah, right? Yeah. Super poppy. Yeah, you accept that it can be true. Right. So yeah, I mean, totally different shift from the original heavy. There's no reason. You Two totally different worlds. A hundred percent. Then we go to the guitar solo, which is ripping, and the riff behind the guitar solo changes three times, if you listen to it. Three different riffs behind the guitar solo, which is incredible. That's great, yeah. And the first riff is the outro riff. They, I love when they do that. They do that in Into the Void, too, a little bit. Geezer starts playing that bass line before the ending. A foreshadowing a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So yeah. that kick-ass riff starts behind the solo, but he changes it three times. It's crazy. So then they finally bring back one of the parts, ghostly shadows from the other world, evil forces in your mind, trapped between the worlds of life and death, frozen in the realms of time. Look behind you. So they do bring that part back. It's the only part they bring back in the whole song. And then we go to another riff, which is the outro, which is you feel yourself falling. You're at the end of the line. Your body is crawling, but your senses are blind. Cold, cold feelings are running through your brains. Ice cold fingers flowing through your veins. Yeah, a little snow blind right there, right? But the oh, great fucking part, man. I love that part. But again, the, the consistent thing is killer fucking lyrics. This oh yeah, killer fucking lyrics, man. That, that's great shit. And it was what seven parts, right? Yeah, seven parts. So I mean, Not including the, the the two different solo parts too, because I won't double count the solo because he brings it back. But yeah, like nine. Well, yeah, they bring one riffs. back. But yeah. yeah, yeah, nine different riffs in this song. Absolutely incredible. Fucking incredible, man. Yeah, it is for sure. And shockwave. The title. I wonder where the, where the title comes from. Yeah, I don't know. It's a great Unless question. it's just something Ozzy came up with and they thought it sounded cool and they just rolled with it or something. He tends to like new titles. Yeah, it doesn't have anything to really to do with the lyrics. Never said in the song, right? Kind of crazy. I wonder if it was just a working title that they kept. We've Could done be. that before. We've, we've done yeah. that before. I was going to say, I've done that before. Yeah. yeah. Shit, they called NIB Nib. I mean, they probably didn't give a right. shit. You know? Yeah. Um, so I would have to say, is there another Black Sabbath song that follows a trajectory like this that is just this scattered i don't think so i don't either it, it's all right. over the place it really is and i don't think i ever really picked up on it until i was getting ready for the show and it's just mm -hmm. like holy shit it is just such a diverse I'm song picking up on it right now actually <laughs> right. And, and i realized the, the first section is my favorite yeah you know, like it kind of comes out of the gate with the best part and then you know uh but yeah i agree it's, it's totally different i don't I can't think of any songs anywhere that are like that. Yeah, that's true. Not even Black Sabbath. <laughs> what other song yeah. is like this, man? It's just part, 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 part. I got all these riffs and all these parts. I don't really, I can't make a song out of them. Let's just put them together and make one song out of them. And I do think this is the one song that could have been better given time. Because yeah. I think if given time, they might have said, you know, hey, let's really continue to build on that. There's no reason this for you to first run. This course is so good. Let's, it's let's, so let's, good. Let's, let's continue somewhere. Yeah. Because yeah, if that was in the song more, this song might be a little higher on my list. Let's be yeah. perfectly honest. Agreed. Anything else on Shockwave? Nah, I think I'm good, man. All but right. That will bring us to the amazing, and I do want to enter this one, Air Dance, which is my you know. friend at my show I played's favorite Black Sabbath song ever that he thought I wouldn't know, right? That's crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and spoil a little bit and say that it's not, it may not be my favorite song on this album, but Air Dance for me is up there in Black Sabbath floor. I just fucking love this track. Always have. I love how remarkably different it is from anything else in the catalog. Don Airy is a god, as Dan says, on this track. And he's the standout performer on this track, I think. The, key, the, the keyboards are so fucking good. And it has, especially in the last section of the song, Sounds like the fucking doors. Jazz. I mean, it's jazz. But it's it, kind it's of break totally down jazzy. Yeah. 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 But I got a doors vibe. I couldn't love it anymore because it is different. I, I just, it reminds me of like Revelation Mother Earth, but different. You know, like the Sabbath vert, like this, this, that same vibe, though, just where it changes so much. I love this song, man. This is a Black Sabbath song that I listen to as much as any song in the catalog. Wow, that's some big praise right there. Yeah, I love it. I like it. I don't know if I love it to your extent. I mean, it doesn't have the same emotion to me as a Johnny Blade, I'm sorry, a Junior's Eyes or 
maybe she's gone from technical ecstasy. I, I like a little bit better. I like that song too. Yeah. This song is unique. Again, I don't know if there is a song written by anybody <laughs> that sounds like this. Honestly. I mean, it starts I know. out there's this the intro starts like with this heavy harmony guitar, right? You know, it's just so different. And then it goes into this beautiful jazz piano part. As I say, you go into the court, into the verse, it just shifts like shifts. that. Yeah. She sits in silence. And, and right. Don's just fucking smoking it, dude. He's showing off. Big time. This is perfect for, for Don Airy. And I'm, yeah. I'm going to get to one part. I'm going to have a little critique on Don, but very small. But this song fits him better. Like this song is exactly where he should be, mm -hmm. like all over it. It's definitely like there's even a part where he's mimicking Tony on the solo. It's 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 uh, faded right, but if you listen closely, the, as the start of the solo starts, he's mimicking him. You know, they're playing the same thing, kind of like a Deep Purple type thing. What the fuck effect does Tony have on his guitar solo? Man, I don't know. Some of the effects in this entire album for Tony are out there. Yeah, but I'm just like, I, what I'm, I'm like, like, is this a is this a guitar? But then I'm like, oh, yeah, I can hear in the way it's being played, it's Tony. You just know mm -hmm. it's Tony. Because you like, wonder if it's a synthesizer at times. You're yeah, yeah, exactly. Or is it, you know? Yeah, but very but unique. I, I got to ask you, this the opening line. She sits in silence. Ozzy's delivery is so fucking yeah. good on that line. And really the whole verse. So my biggest complaint about this song is not enough Ozzy, honestly. You yeah. know, the whole last two and a half minutes is that jazz guitar solo. Mm -hmm. They only go verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and that's it. Ozzy disappears for the rest of it. And I yeah. wish Ozzy would have come back. You yeah. know, you know, they should have done another chorus and another away part, because the away is one of my favorite parts of the song, you know, where he's just singing that so melancholy and just like, oh, my God, it's so beautiful. I wish they would have just brought it back, but it never comes back. Yeah. So to me, it's just not enough Ozzy. That's my biggest knock I on can, it. I can understand. I, we always want more Ozzy. Yeah, for but sure. I, I also am in love with what Don Airy and the band are playing there. So I guess that's why I can overlook that a little bit more because I, I do just love that entire section. And this section, the, his piano playing behind the verse is so fucking good, man. Yeah. Don Airy hits a home run here. That's, that's shred of piano. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here. I mean, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. So I do think it's a great song. So lyrically, it's obviously – if you take it at face value, it's about a, uh, an older person, lady, who was a great dancer reflecting back on her years. But this song is clearly an allegory of Black Sabbath, of where they were at their time looking back on their fonder years. Skeezer did say that. And it, when you look at it like that, it's just brilliant lyrics. Because on, on face value, it is about an older lady reflecting about how great she was. And it's really Geezer singing it about the band as well which band. is great yeah i mean God, how many heavy metal didn't bands? even realize it at the time you know what no. i'm saying like yeah exactly yeah you know, how many bands like a black sabbath are using allegories in their lyrics i mean mm. the guy's a genius man yeah a genius i fucking love him I, so I, like, let's go the I think Dan's a genius. Allegories, I've never heard that in my life. Okay. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, but the, that's what crack cocaine would be, right? Because it's not really about crack cocaine. It's about... To me, that's more of an again. analogy. But yeah, okay. close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little different. Um, all right, so the, here's the lyric. She sits in silence in her midnight world with faded pictures of a dancing girl. God, uh, you are right. Ozzy does not get enough credit. His his vocal performance here is a home run. His delivery right there is fucking spectacular. So I think she says half distant dreamer, right? Because this is not what it says here, but I think half yeah, distant it's dreamer. Yeah, her distant dreamer. I think yeah. it's half, di half distant dreamer. Yeah. That's, yeah, I think so. On the seas of time, her happy memories dancing through her mind. Dude. Da, 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 da. This song's emotional. It is emotional. It, it's almost like a score to a movie. That's a good way of putting it, I think. Like a score yeah. to a film to where you're just, you know, it's got parts where you just draws emotion out and then you go back to this other thing. And then. Yeah, and Tony's that. done that before. Kind of, I've always felt like mm -hmm. that way about Fluff, right? Fluff to yeah. me is a soundtrack to a movie. So much emotion. But this one, we get we get Ozzy to sing on it. Fluff would be great, like at the end of Friday the 13th when Jason's in the water and it's playing like <laughs> Fluff and yes. the girl's like looking around. Then Jason grabs her. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. And then it goes to Black Sabbath. Yeah. All right. In days of romance, she was the queen of dance. She danced the night away. And back to the verse. It is a great song, man. And again, like I said, back to in our day, we were fucking bad to the bone. 
Yeah, a hundred percent. Yep. And as the seasons turn the days to years, she holds her pictures, hears the silent cheers. I'm getting goosebumps again. God dang it, geezer. He's so good, man. The days grow lonely. I love that delivery, right? The days, the days grow, grow lonely. lonely. Oh, it's yeah. so good. Only Ozzy. Yeah. Only fucking Ozzy. For the dancing queen. And now she dances only in her dreams. Whew. Brilliant. That is brilliant poetry, guys. In Days of Romance, she was the queen of dance. She danced the night away. Away. My favorite part of the song, away, away, away. Away. Yeah. I wish that would just come back. I love it so much. Again, I love melodic guitar playing. Right. And Tony is nailing it right there. The, yeah. the whole section. Dun, 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 dun. This is beautiful. It's fucking. That's a it's a gorgeous song, man. You got that's the one you're gonna harp on me for Johnny Blade. I gotta harp on you for. for well, you don't know Blade. where it's gonna fit left yet. Song. I'm just saying it would be up there with changes and she's gone. If Ozzy would just sing a little bit more, to be I, honest, it might be better than changes. We I'm always want more Ozzy, yeah. but I do think Tony picks up the melody slack right there, and it, it's well, it's got. It's such a left field turn though, because it's so yeah. melancholy. It starts kind of heavy, and then that's then we get that. It. Dun, 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 That's dun, why I love it. Da, 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 da. Sorry. All right. It's such you know, a- the guys were loving that shit, though. Like, they were having a fucking blast playing oh, that yeah. song in the studio. But I can see why Ozzy struggles with some of this stuff. I can. It's not what he wanted, right? He yeah. wanted more mainstream. You know, he probably ate up Never Say Die, you know, big time, the song. So, very prog. This, is this the most prog Black Sabbath track or Spiral oh, Architect? Yeah. It's one I of the two. I think yeah. this one. It's it's one of the two. It's excellent. Um, all right. So then we go to Over to You, which also starts in the key of B and very similar start to Hard Road, right? Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Yeah. They both, they both, Tony both is picking that B uh B note to start these songs. Pretty cool. I absolutely love this song. This song I think is very underrated underappreciated i don't know nobody that talks about over to you honestly i think over to you has like an anthem dun, 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 dun. you know like that that groove that pocket is very anthemish i believe yeah I, this is one of my most listened to songs by black sabbath okay. yeah that's how much i love this song and here's something that's very interesting i'm going to start out right out of the gates with it this is the only song in black sabbath's canon that ozzy didn't write the melody to that he sings Geezer, I'm sorry, Bill created, Ozzy couldn't come up with anything. And Bill, again, trying to be the peacemaker, Geezer was getting pissed off. Be, Gil, Bill kind of came up with the ghost melody and sang it, and Ozzy kind of copied it and made it his own. But, you know, Ozzy was definitely struggling on at this point with just even wanting to be there. But And Ozzy's never hid that. Bill wrote the melody for the song. Like, it's right. not like it's, a, 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 it's a not like it's groundbreaking news or a secret. So that's my point going forward you know I, ozzy we know there's always been a lot of bullshit out there about writing this and that if you talk to the man he doesn't ever deny it right he's never tried to say yeah i wrote all of bark at the moon he's never you know what i mean he's that's, that's what's frustrating about it but anyway i'd agree for sure so i love this song too i think this one is definitely very very modern ozzy to me i even though he didn't write the the but like it's very straightforward like you come off of shockwave you come off of air dance and now you have a song that's very like much more straightforward, classic rock song. Right. Wouldn't I'm you agree? My foot right now, top tap, I'm like tapping my foot, just hearing the melody in yeah. my head, this, the, the, the intro. So here's my issue with the song. It's very small actually. Cause I think the melody is fucking incredible. And I think outside of junior's eyes, this is Ozzy's maybe most vulnerable sounding melody on the record. I think Ozzy just captures this melody so good. So Bill hit a home run here, but I don't like Don's piano in the pre-chorus at Hmm. all. It's so overbearing. He's playing this like big Liberace part, you know, over the traveling endlessly. I just wish Tony's guitars were fucking louder. Why? I mean, it's Black Sabbath. Can't we get the guitars louder here? Uh, That's the one big gripe I have on this song. You know, let's, Let's mix it different. It's fine with Don, with Don's playing, but why is that the prominent instrument? Right. I just don't understand it. And, and Tony's producing. I yeah. mean, he's his it's hands all over the album. Yeah, I agree. You know, he's not mixing it and engineering, but he's, you know what I'm saying? I'm just yeah. saying his hands are all over the record. So all why is he so, so far back in the mix and all of it? I can't even I, tell you what the guitar's doing in that part. 
Yeah, and especially when you're looking at a time when guitar guitar gods is growing. You know right. what I mean? Like it's it's the peak moment for him to really show what he's got. It's 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 strange. Yeah, for sure. But great groove, great great melody, man. Bill kills it, and I think Ozzy's delivery is absolutely just spot on. And I love the outro. Everything about the song is great. We'll go over the lyrics here a little bit. To me, the song is about a guy who is struggling in life and he's looking for answers from anywhere, from the education system, from the government, from the military, any, anywhere that you know he can find trust in somebody to help him through a struggling life. What, what do you have? Yeah. No, I agree totally. One, I think you nailed it. I mean, like, like always. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's go through the lyrics real quick. All right, born in a window, nobody's fool. Raised in a prison, you called a school. Taught your religion, told what to do. I handed my childhood over to you. Great, I mean, that melody, dude, whole, and Ozzy's delivery. Yeah. Jesus, that is so yeah. good. Uh, I love it, absolutely. So again, somebody that's looking to religion, looking to school, like, hey, I'm, I need some help here. I was raised in a prison you know, just help me, give me some guidance in my life. And then we got the pre-chorus, traveling endlessly. I'm searching my mind. I'm almost afraid of what I will find. What a good lyric that is, right? I mean, right. Oh my God. Wandering aimlessly, oh, what can I do? I handed my future over to you, over to you. So then we have the chorus, over to you, future looks blue, what can I do? Like maybe the weakest part of the song, quite frankly. Is Agreed. Core, yeah. Right? It doesn't yeah. even have to be there, but it's not terrible. It's not like uh, Johnny Blade, do you? Right. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do think it doesn't have to be there. Agree. Working for working for freedom, fighting your wars, feeding our children, keeping your laws. Someday you'll suffer. Then what I'll do? I'll hand all your promises over to you. Wow. I mean. Geezer is just absolutely killing it. Standing inside myself. I used to think it was cell, but it's myself. Standing inside myself, I'm losing control. You made me believe in the stories you told. Waiting impatiently, what else can I do? I handed my future over to you. To you. Again, the chorus again. Over to you, future looks blue. Over to you. I mean, 10 out of 10 lyrically, right? Shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think yeah. this is on par with anything else on the record. Tears full of sadness, sealed in myself. I don't think it's cell. I think he says sealed in myself. Whispering secrets, what do they tell? Mad politicians can't tell it true. I handed my children over to you. Which again, now we're in the same cycle, right? Same cycle. He went through it. Now his children are going to go through it. Yeah. That, you know. So again, yeah. now we get to my favorite part of the song, <laughs> which is the ending. All over, over to you. That part I can listen to on repeat all day, right? Just How the groove, is that? right? That groove is just and moving. Ozzy's vocal all yeah. over. It's so good. Yeah, all and over to you. It's, it's funny because those melodies written by Bill, but they, they sound so Ozzy like melodies, don't they? So I think the ending is probably Ozzy riffing. Quite well, yeah, but I'm saying the entire song. Oh, the but, entire yeah, song, yeah. yeah, definitely. Bill, yeah, nailed, I think the ending it. is just is just Ozzy riffing. Just you right. Know. And again, Ozzy's okay singing Bill's melody because he's family. Right? Yeah. But fuck Dave Walker. So I think before we finish up, because we're getting close here, and I know we've been on talking a long time, I think Ozzy was hurt that they did not wait for him. Even though he quit, I think he was hurt. They moved on and brought Dave Walker in, and he never got over it. Never. I believe that with all of my heart that he was like, these motherfuckers knew my dad died and they just moved on without me. Geezer says in his book, he never really got over it when they fired him. Yeah. A hundred percent. At the same time. I mean, you know, so yeah. Yeah. I think they always thought of that brotherhood. They were four mm -hmm. nobodies from Aston. And the fact that they moved on without Ozzy, they fired Geezer. You know, Tony was a businessman. And listen, not a businessman, but at the end of the day, he, you know, look at the whole Jethro Tull story. He was going to leave them because he knew that was a bigger deal. But then he realized it's not quite for me. He probably needed to be the leader of a band. He was never going to be the leader in Jethro Tull. Yeah. So even early on, we knew Tony was business first. I don't yeah. think the other three were. Well, someone has to be. Every band has a leader, and and someone has to kind of to take that role, and it was Tony, you know? 
for sure. Anything else on over to you? I'm good, man. Ready for All breakout. Right. All right, let's go to breakout. Breakout is an instrumental song that has a string arrangement done by Will Malone, right? Which is cool. Will Malone did Sabbath, mm-hmm. Bloody Sabbath. Will, Mal- Will Malone also did uh, Ordinary Man, which is very cool. So Will Malone's been kind of, he also did Sabotage. He did the choir on Sabotage. So he's been sprinkled along with Ozzy's career quite a bit, but he does the brass arrangement on Breakout. So Breakout's a very divisive song. I actually think it's quite bad. I think this is maybe one of the worst songs in Black Sabbath's catalog. It is boring as fuck. Now, here's the truth. If you listen to the riff, it never goes anywhere. I think it's the same riff the whole fucking Mm -hmm. song. It just repeats. And just repeats. And they wanted Ozzy to sing over that. And there's a place for Ozzy to sing, right? It's like a War Pigs type of thing. He could have sang in that space. But... Where does the song go? And Ozzy refused to sing it. And yeah. that's why they had to bring the brass in. But what do you think of Breakout, Josh? I actually oddly kind of enjoy it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I don't like it It's at all. brief enough that if it went any longer, it'd be like, okay, you know, it is a touch slow. You know, it, it almost all thought had like a 1970s gang vibe, kind of like Johnny Blade. I almost wondered if it would have worked in front of Johnny Blade. The key's probably different and stuff, but it has that 70s back alley vibe to me. So to me, it might have worked somewhere like that, but I actually like the saxophone. I'm big, I love saxophone, though. I don't know why. Like, I love saxophone and rock and roll music, and the, the, the brass never bothered me in that. I, I really enjoy it, actually. So let me be clear. It is not the brass I don't like. It saves the song. If there's any okay. remote credibility to the song, it's the brass. So my issue is it's the same riff over and over and over again. Yeah. It's just boring as fuck. Boring. Yeah. It just doesn't go anywhere. So let's talk a little about this because I know we're running short on time, but Ozzy refused to sing any melodies to the song, right? So that's why they brought the brass in. But then Geezer says, I'm going to call a little bullshit here. Geezer says, I wrote lyrics for Breakout and Ozzy refused to sing them. And it pissed me off. And why am I writing all these lyrics? But we know Geezer doesn't write lyrics until Ozzy comes up with a melody first. So what's going on here? Was it a was it a song maybe for Dave Walker that they had melody for that Ozzy refused to sing? But oh. I don't know what's going on here, but one yeah. plus one does not equal two here because Geezer doesn't write me- lyrics until Ozzy has his melody down. And we know right. Ozzy refused to sing it. And Geezer hates writing lyrics. So I don't Geezer, see him right. sitting around doing it for pleasure. But that's his big gripe. Oh, Ozzy yeah. looked at my lyrics, break out and refused to sing it. No, he heard the riff and refused to sing it because there was nowhere for him to go with the song. Yeah. There's nothing there. Right. What do you think? Yeah, there's nothing Is there. there... I, I don't buy that. I think that's this. And I don't think he's lying. It's just misremembering how things went down. Probably, you know, I, yeah. there's nothing there. It, it's, it, it's, it's repetitive. There's, there's just not a whole lot to do. You know, I think the brass, like you said, saves it. Right. And, and just kind of moves on to the next track. Kind of like a FX or something, you know. Yeah, it's not better than that, that, obviously. Yeah, but you obviously. know what I mean, like. Right. Yeah. Yeah, maybe like a don't like don't start too late. Something yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All right, now we go to the final song on the record, "Swinging the Chain." It is the second song that Bill Ward sang lead on for Black Sabbath, and I know we're running short of time, but I do want to discuss these lyrics quite a bit. Absolutely. I think this song has got a killer guitar riff, one of my favorites on the record. And I know I'm probably a bigger fan of this song than you are, but I actually think Swinging the Chain is awesome. Bill Ward sounds incredible on it. Bill Ward supposedly rewrote the lyrics because Ozzy refused to sing it, and he was trying to get Ozzy to sing it, but he still didn't sing it. I think Ozzy left the sessions early, if you want to know the truth. Between Mm -hmm. Breakout and Swinging the Chain, he was like, fuck it, I'm done, I'm out of here. And, you know, it left. Bill said he sang the song to the last minute. Like, the record was due, and he was still singing. They had to go on tour at like six in the morning and he was singing the song at three in the morning in the studio to knock it out and get it done, which is pretty crazy actually. But I think it's some great music, some harmonica from uh, John L star, which I think is pretty cool. Cause if Ozzy was there, wouldn't have Ozzy played the harmonica? Exactly what I was getting ready to say. If Ozzy's there for this track, he probably plays the harmonica on it. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Um, I don't understand. It's it's not that over the top or anything. No, not at all. So yeah. So yeah, I think this song is kind of underrated. Uh, but it, of course, it's Bill singing. And I think Bill has a great growly, gruff voice in this song. You know, So mm-hmm. let's talk a little bit about the lyrics. I personally think this song 
is about Ozzy leaving the band the first time. I, I'm going to die on a hill on this. And I think okay. that they say the song is written about Hitler, but there is one line about Hitler, but it's not what the song is about if you read it. But we're going to go through this lyric by lyric, and you tell me this is not about them singing to Ozzy. Is I'm that cool? All I'm right, intrigued. Let's, let's go. It's against my uniform to be a civil judge. Talking about judging, right? All the songs are history now about rock stars and their grudge. What does that have to do with Hitler? <laughs> what does that have to do with Hitler? <laughs> Nothing. Right. Yeah, this yeah. is about a guy. You know, all our songs are history now about rock stars and their grudge. Let us cast our minds back to 30 years or more. Let's remind everybody, how old are they about this time? 30. About you 30. talk of all the vandals. Well, Hitler beat, beat them all. And I think Ozzy was probably saying, you guys are dicks. And he's saying, you talk, you know, we're not Hitler. Let's, let's, let's keep it, you know, real here. And we're sad and sorry. We're really sorry that it happened that way. Yes, we're so, so sorry. But why'd you have to treat us that way? Again, Go these ahead. sound like Bill for me. I was gonna say, you say he re reworked these. I have no problem believing that. It definitely yeah. sounds more like, like Bill's his poetry and shit he does now. Yeah, 100%. Compare ourselves with others and cover them in sin. Listen to this line, Josh. Oh God, what a terrible, a terrible state we're in. There must be some way out of here, a compromise that's right. If we cannot work it out, we're going to have to fight. Right? Writing's on the wall, man. I'm telling you, this is about Ozzy leaving the first time. Mm -hmm. it, to me, it is so, so clear. And then we go back to the chorus, and we're so sorry. Great chorus, by the way. Bill kills this song. And he's hitting notes, man, that I didn't even know this guy can hit. We're really sorry that it happened that way. Yes, we're sad and sorry. We cannot go, we cannot go on in those days. We can't keep going how we're going. Ozzy was drunk, not participating, miserable to be around. They were ripped off. I, I still think this was about the end of the band the first time Ozzy quit. Great ripping guitar solo by Tony here, by the way. All right, I'm talking about my brothers. Yeah, I'm talking about sisters as well. And I wish you good luck. Good luck. And I think the sisters line could mean many things. Obviously, Ozzy was married. They were all married. You know, there's a lot. They're talking about their families because it's over, right? All right, then we go to the outro. It never goes back to this. Again, classic Black Sabbath. We come to an outro after the guitar solo. We don't go back to anything. Which is fine because I fucking love the outro. I'll say I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So here, and I know you and I've talked about this, and you're not on my page, but I'm I'm gonna die on this hill. So he's my. This is probably my favorite part of the song, right? You got somebody in the background singing. You gotta believe it. You gotta believe it. You gotta believe it. And they claim the Ozzy singing somewhere here. I don't hear him. You and I, I can. Either. You can hear Ozzy crystal fucking clear anywhere. I do not hear it. So Tony, I'm sorry. Bill is singing, oh, but the world's still on fire, right? Mm -hmm. This says, chain the hope you take on liar. What the hell does that even mean? <laughs> Sounds like I thought I'd write. <laughs> yeah, because that's not what he says. He yeah. says, take and hold me tight because John's a liar. Listen to it very clearly, folks. That's what he says. Take and hold me close because John's a liar. And then he goes, you know, oh, we're on fire, we're on fire. And let's remind you that Ozzy's real name is John. It's John, yeah. I'm telling you, I think that's what he says. Yeah, I think you're probably right, man. Yeah. Do I have you on my page, oh, yeah. finally? I, I I think that line is very intriguing. Yeah. For sure. But yeah. I think if you look at, even if you don't look at that last line, if you look at the mm -hmm. basis of the lyrics. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. To me, it sounds like they're they're singing to Ozzy. Yeah. And I wonder if that's why Ozzy didn't sing it. Could be. Maybe he you picked know, up on it, right? And it's like, you know, I don't sing this shit. Fuck this guy. Yeah. yeah. It's about me fucking leaving. You know, absolutely. And they didn't have time to rewrite them. Let's be honest. Yep. Geezer was probably like, fuck you. I'm not rewriting the lyrics. So, yep. you know. We're out so of time. I, it's we're it's out the of last time. night. Yeah. Let's go. So yep. I actually think that song is very underrated. It is got incredible melodies. Bill was on fire here. Again, Bill trying to save the game, save the day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He's trying to save the game, save the day. Like, hey, I'm a team player. We're going to do whatever it can to keep Black Sabbath. I'll alive. just do it. I mean, I'll come out. Do it. It's yeah, going to yeah. be fine. Yeah, Band, drummers, Peter, Chris, you got some drummers all over the place singing. Not a big deal. Let me let me knock this out. So what else you got on uh, Swing of the yeah. Chain? No, that's it, man. I agree. Nice analogy of the lyrics. I haven't ever really thought about it before, but now that you bring it to my attention, and especially that line, I can hear it so clear. I, I think you're right, man. Yeah, I think that's what he says, man. Right. Um, all right, so real quick before we do our ranking and get out of here, 
I just want to tell you why I think Black Sabbath's Never Say Die is looked down upon. And I think it's all side two. Let's just look at side two real quick because we talked about the brilliance of side one. Now we're diehards. We love side two. But we have a song like Shockwave that has got the most strangest structure I've ever seen in any song in my life. Then we got Air Dance, which we know it's brilliant, but fuck, it's very, different. Very out of left field, right? Very out of left field. Over to You, which is a great song. I love it, but it's buried in the middle of it. Then you got Breakout, and then a song Ozzy doesn't sing. Yeah. It, it's not a great side two. Let's be yeah. perfectly clear. You know, especially with how great side one is. But like I said, side one is so fucking good. It is. You know, and I, you I almost wonder that. if they would have mixed them in there a little bit. The sequel did a little different, so it might have changed that just a little bit. Yeah, for sure. You know. So, all right, let's do our rankings. We're going to go nine to one. This is going to be okay. tough because this is for the first time I'm doing it on the fly. Me and, too. And Josh is too. But Josh always does. So he's an expert yeah, doing it on the fly. So I'm. Uh, some of my rankings changed a little bit, but. I definitely love this record, and I just want to say thank you, Josh, for taking the time to go through this with me, man. Absolutely, I, I love it, and I hope thank people, too, man. yeah, I hope people really understand the the love we have for this record. Absolutely, it's and when we do, you know, we're, we're just being honest. If we do put down a song negatively for something, it's not that we don't love it or that we're shitting on it. It's just being honest opinion, you know, on, on certain moments, you know. Definitely. That right. said, my number, number nine, nine is Breakout. My number nine is. Breakout by far. Okay. Number eight for me is, I'm sorry, I do love it. I do, but number eight for me is Swing in the Chain. Okay. That's fair. I mean, here, here's the truth. My number eight is also Swinging the Chain, and I love it as well. But let's be honest, folks. It's not Ozzy singing. So it just, it goes to the eight. I mean, ultimately, I love it. And it was going yep. to be higher on my list. But at the end of the day, I'd just rather have Ozzy singing. But I fucking love Swinging the Chain. Yeah. So number seven for me is number seven on the album. That would be over to you. I'm going backwards. I'm going right from last to first. Ugh. All right. My number seven is Shockwave. Okay. My number six is Shockwave. So we're okay. kind of on par. Let's see what your so six far. is. My number six is Air Dance. Oh, okay. If you went yeah. over to you, then we would have been right uh, on. No, okay. definitely not. Okay. My number six is Air Dance. I love it, but... We're getting to the meat of the album right now. We are. At this point, they're all they're all killer, right? Right. Uh, number five for me is Johnny Blade. All right. All right. Yeah. That, that's a little painful, but not too far bad. I thought you were going to give yeah. me like, when you said my number eight, I was like, please don't say Johnny Blade. <laughs> we were going to have a Mr. Darkness on our hands. Bye. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. All right, my number five is a hard road, and I love it, but my number five is a hard road. My number four, four is a hard road. Okay. Yeah, we're not too far off. We're this not. is the big one. My number four. Mm -hmm. So really, there's two songs we look at this album differently, and I bet you this yeah. is going to be your number four. But my number four is Over to You, which is the one that is like the weird wrinkle, and I think this is going to be your mm -hmm. weird wrinkle. Yeah. Yeah, my number three is Air Dance. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, that's, that's where we just flip those flip two. Flip-flop, yeah. Yep. My number three is Johnny Blade. Okay. Great like song. It. Number two for me is Junior's Eyes. Again, okay. the emotion. Just got to love that song. Love it. My number two is also Junior's Eyes. It's okay. one of my top Black Sabbath songs. And so we, we know share the number one. The, we share the number one. And it, it's, you know, listen, go ahead, say what it is. Uh, never say die. Never, never say, say die. die. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. And listen, I love it too because it's Speak of the Devil. I'm not going to lie. Like, 100%. That's version on Speed of the Devil is actually very slow. If you listen to it back to back, like I listen to the title track, the Hammersmith show, and then I listen to Speak of the Devil. The Hammersmith show is flying. They are flying on it. But mm -hmm. actually, Tommy is so in the pocket on that. Like he's playing very, very, a little bit. He's playing great, but it's a little bit slower than the, than the studio version. But it's excellent. God, yeah. he sounds great on the live version. Yeah, I know it's not live. That, the entire yeah. album's so good. Yeah, speaking of that, it was great. But yeah, Never Say Die, I just think is the most iconic track off of Never Say Die. And I, I wish they would have played it on the reunion tour, Josh. I just They don't could have done it, man. Yeah, I don't understand it. They could have tuned it down either. to D instead of E, mm -hmm. a whole step, and I think Ozzy would have been fine. I you think know? so. And I, it never attempted. I never attempted. Unless it harkens back to what we said, the process. And they all were unhappy with the process, and they just didn't want to revisit that. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Like, everybody but Bill seems to talk negatively about this record. Yeah. Actually, Bill's and, trying his best. 
Bill just doesn't talk negatively about much of anything, though. Yeah, great point. You know, Bill's really the down. star of that record, man. I mean, if you guys just listen to Bill's drums on Never Say Die, the album, he is yep. absolutely on And fire. again, the jazzy stuff, air dance, all that. Bill eats that up. That's what he does. Yeah. Yeah. And it actually, he sounds fantabulous. Fantabulous. If they could have yeah. just made Tony's guitar a little louder, and if they would have had time to work on songs, like I think Shockwave has got the ingredients to be a classic. Yeah. It's just rushed. I don't know what other word to use, but it's just rushed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rushed and cold. Yep. <laughs> that's 100%. it. Rushed and cold. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Not a great studio, that's for sure. They should have went to Miami yep. and went to Criterion, like they all said. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Dan, before we head out, was there something you wanted to mention real quick? You kind of texted it to me earlier. Yeah, definitely. The one thing we didn't mention today is they finally announced the Black Sabbath box set of the Tony Martin years, which I'm super excited about. I'm actually, yes. listen, I'm a Tony fan. I love all eras of Black Sabbath. And I think Cross Purposes and Tear in particular, two of my favorite records. I love them. So all of the IRS recordings are being uh, remastered. Uh, Forbidden is being remixed, which I heard a little snippet of today. Sounds incredible. There's some bottom awesome. end to it. Thank God. Uh, so I'm super excited about that. Of course, Eternal Idol is not included because, let me say that again. Sorry. Of course, Eternal Idol is not included. That's because that was on Warner Brothers. This is the yep. IRS bo box set release so that they're redoing. So that's why it's not there. And of course, the one album they left off was Cross Purposes Live, which I'm okay with because I yep. can't stand people singing Ozzy anyway. But, you know, a lot of the diehards are mad about that, but I'm okay. It's not yep. there. I'm just happy we're getting Headless Cross, Cross Purposes, Tear, and well, I'll do it in order. Headless Cross, Tear, Cross Purposes, and Forbidden, I'll remaster. Eddie Trunk referred to it as Tire. Oh, my God. Yeah. I always called it TYR. <laughs> no, it's tear. <laughs> it's definitely tear. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, totally. I and mean, there's been, and I'm looking forward to it also. I do enjoy those records. But there's definitely been a segment of the fan base that's waited forever for this. Yeah, I'm happy so for it, them, it, man. It totally, I'm totally happy excited for, for this. Yeah. Yeah. Tony yeah. Martin's very underappreciated. So yeah, definitely. Definitely. Absolutely. You know, I think Tony Martin, you know, I would love to do maybe, maybe we'll do a whole episode once, once it's released where we can talk about some of these. Cause yeah. The, you know, I know those records like the back of my hand. They're fantastic. Absolutely great. If you guys have not heard Cross Purposes, Geezer comes back to the band. That is a great record, man. Evil sounds Eye. Like just, yeah, it does. It sounds like Sabbath. Evil Eye, co-written with Eddie Van Halen. Awesome song. You know, it, it is a great record, man. Yeah. Awesome. All, All right, right. Thanks, Josh. Dan, with that said, man, is there anything you want, else to say, you want to say before we head out? Yeah, definitely. I just want to tell the fans, let us know your rankings. Let us know what your favorite song and your ranking is for never say die do you guys love this record do you despise this record do you think it should be kind of lower in the black sabbath canon we don't obviously you know every time we do a black sabbath ranking not us i see online but never say die is always like ranked in the bottom three and it's just not and that bad i had mentioned it then before we went on air that i was going to mention it on air and i forgot so i'll say it now it's an album that simply isn't tired yet you know we we hear paranoid so often and we hear black sabbath so often and master of reality Never Say Die is the album I may listen to more than any of them because I definitely it's do. not all over the radio, right? Yeah. So it's it's more fresh when you hear it. It's it's not so burned out. And if you don't know this album, go enjoy it. Go listen to it more and, and give it a real chance. I think, you know, you all love it. It's, it's good stuff. All right, Dan. That said, appreciate you guys for tuning in, and we will see you on the other side. Thanks for coming. No, thank you for coming. So I got to get a thing like what you have. Oh, shit. My life yeah. just moved. Like the old school puff filter? Yeah, but I'm not quite sure if I can buy a generic one or not. Yeah, I don't yeah. either. Because I, I stopped using the pop filter because it was covering my face, and I need the world to see the beautiful face. So. Yeah, you got to see that smile. <laughs> exactly. I mean, do you, I mean, now that we're on video, it's like Dan's like getting his tan. <laughs> 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 That's why we didn't do an episode for a month or so there. Dan had to get his tan on yeah, and, and things like right. that. That's right. Fuck, camera. I do that's look tan, don't I? Holy <laughs> shit. That I've been Arizona out coaching, sun. man. Yeah, I'm out for every real. weekend in the co coaching. Yeah. We were up in Vegas last weekend. It was pretty really? awesome. We fucking hailed, actually, for a little bit. Was, the weather was crazy. All right, Sounds I'm ready. Good. All right. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Diary of the Mad Men, the ultimate Ozzy Osbourne podcast, where we geek out about all things Ozzy and all things Ozzy-related. I am Mr. Drum, and he... <laughs> Let me do that again. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Mr. Trump. Oh, I love it. Is that, I started to say Mr. Dan, Dan and Trump. Drago. I thought it was Drago and Trump. Uh, well, I'm glad that, that we can edit that part out. Yeah, that is, I'm glad you got that out of the way. 